What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another late night fix with Short the Vix. That is me, if you guys didn't know already. Um, how are we feeling after today? Awesome 4.82% green day during the market hours, down 17 cents in the after hours. I mean, after we have one of those decent sized green days, it is normal to see a little bit of a sell off in the after hours. So, this is not something to really be worried about at all. Um, and then Honestly, when we see any post-market or pre-market action, we never really know what's going to happen until the market opens. Typically, like regardless of what happens in the pre-market, we'll, we'll typically see the opposite happen. Like If we are deep red in the pre-market, we'll come up. If we're pretty significantly green in the pre-market, then we'll shoot down a little bit. But it usually balances out around uh, 9.45 to 10.15 Eastern. What's going on, everybody? Shout out to the mods, Vix in the mix, that I am. What's up, Hella Bliss, Chris Burton, 007, Darth Bane. What's up, guys? All right. They're mad. Ho, ho, a couple of them are. 20,000 AMC shares holding strong since January. Fernando, that's awesome. Good for you, man. Hedgie's committing financial blank. Yeah. STV running late, must be smashing some liquid IV. Guys, come on now. You guys know that we've been on the liquid IV train for a while, but Match just got that special sauce to get them to, sp to sponsor him. But every single, like every single time you guys see me with the gallon, that it's liquid IV. It's the lemon lime flavor, and it's awesome. Hey guys, have a wonderful week. Vladimir, you too, man. Why so mad, bro? It, it's it's the most backwards thing that that this one uh, Alpine, this institution's mad about this margin requirement. But they're not even mad that, like, it, like it doesn't affect them. They're like, yeah, we're fine. And, and they're just complaining about all of these margin requirements. It's like, listen, dude, you signed up to be in the National Securities Clearing Corporation and part of these corporations and you over leverage yourself, your position went against you and you're going to get upset when they come asking for more collateral, more margin in order for you to keep your position open. Get out of here. Uh, Nando says, STV, do you think they'll hit us hard in the morning or hit us hard prior to end of day for the weekend? Uh, honestly, Fridays, we have seen a trend where Fridays have been a little bit red. Now, the reason for that is when we pull up the option chain here, remember, options expire on Fridays. So when we're looking at all of these contracts at 35, we see a lot. So this is the call side right here. We've got 7,000 at 33, 8,000 at 32, 10,000 calls at 30. So there's a lot of buying support in terms of hedging calls up until where we are right now. So this is a good spot to be in. There's a lot of people playing options this week. Now, 35 is an interesting level. If we get up through or really close to 35, then we could potentially see some more delta hedging push push this, uh, the stock up, meaning that the institutions who sold those contracts are going to have to buy shares. And then at 40, again, there's always a lot of open interest at this $40 strike. So then when we go over to take a look at the put side, because remember, when they sell those puts in order to hedge them, they have to short the stock. Um, so if we see the stock go down, there's not that many put contracts, like 5,000, 6,000, 6,000 until 30. So there's not that much craziness going on. What's up, Sarah? What's up, Brandon? How you guys doing tonight? Everybody, how's everybody feeling after today? Let me know. How are we doing? We're going to go over a lot of cool stuff tonight. Um, we're going to get TMI on a little bit later. Let me just shoot the link out to everybody, and then I will read how you guys are feeling. This is going to take me two seconds. Let me see. All right, here. And then, oh, we're going to... Uh, nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother some people. Let's see. They got like 5 million ETFs to short for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here's the thing about the ETFs. Would you, I would rather, if I was a hedge fund, I would rather just get shares of AMC to directly short versus just indirectly shorting AMC by shorting the ETF. That is that simple. So the ETFs are like the water bottle example. Like say you're really, really, really 
thirsty stranded in the desert. You have two water bottles that are full. One of them barely has any water in it. You drink the first two water bottles and you're, you're still thirsty. Well, you're going to drink the other water bottle, but it doesn't mean that that last little bit of water is going to really make that much of a difference. It might make a little, little bit of a difference. It might make no difference. Double seven says, "What is on the shelf behind you?" When Steve Young poster? Uh, let's see. New room today. Uh, this was the room that I had for the stream with uh Trey, Keenan, TMI, uh, and Rogue. Uh, I had to move my my setup, um, and then I will be moving to my new apartment in nine days. So then we'll have a completely new background too. So I hope nobody nobody freaks out. Let's see. I'd be doing better if they didn't take so much. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, let's do a little quick Ortex update before we go any further. Um, let's take a look here. Ortex. I beat you guys to it on the Ortex. Nobody had to ask this time, which is good. So Ortex update. Short interest up 2.66% today. At one point, we did see it in the 19% range. Current short interest. So these would be the shares that are shorted. Um, 96.24 million. And today they bar I had a net borrow against AMC of 2.86 million. Utilization is the most important data point, in my opinion, because when we look at the utilization, again, this is I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but we're seeing the utilization start to tick up and we're seeing more shorting. So more shares are going out on loan, making it more difficult for these institutions eventually to get their hands on shares. Now we're kind of seeing that reflected in this max cost to borrow, 8.29%. So they are angry. Squeeze didn't start yet. They're angry at more of some of these proposed rule changes. SCV, have you tried liquid IV and some warm milk? Guys, I don't drink warm milk. Uh, let's see. I feel like I need some liquid IV, says Antics. Dude, everybody could have, everybody needs some liquid IV. Where's Rogue and TMI? Uh, Rogue is actually out with his family tonight, and then TMI is going to pop in for the last hour. So probably around nine. I'm holding until two of my shares will buy Titan a Lambo. Titan's pretty cool. Titan's a cool cat. Where can I? Okay, everybody's going nuts with the liquid IV comments. Have you tried warm milk? No. What? How about cold milk? Cold milk is solid. All right. Yeah, and then again, if you guys have any questions, just drop them in the chat. I will be looking. We're going to answer all questions, go over stuff, get prepared for tomorrow. I think it's going to be a fun day. Um, also, if you guys don't mind just dropping a like on the video, it helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. If you guys have seen, um, when you search AMC on YouTube recently, it doesn't show like, at, like AMC YouTubers videos. It shows like the FUD CNBC videos. So like the only way to like counteract that is for like to get more engagement, if that makes sense. Um, so basically just screw CNBC, let's rank higher than them and beat them. That goes for all the creators. Um, so thank you guys. What's up, Ken? Uh, the last 90 minutes have been quiet with no one streaming. Def, glad you're on. Thank you. Hedgies are big mad. Mad. They're in their offices saying, how is Ed Sheeran doppelganger killing us right now? Who is that? Uh, MSCI, what do you think? I've heard, okay, so I've heard of that new MSCI thing. They have to buy a very significant amount of shares and that happens towards the end of August, I believe. So typically when we see any stock get added to any index, it basically just like it adds more buying volume initially. Now, who knows how much we're going to go up, but that could have been one of the reasons why we started to rally today because of that news who knows it's very hard to pinpoint a specific reason as to why we're moving unless there's like some really big piece of news or like the short started to cover uh what's up with the spy and hyg puts yeah okay so i mean a lot of people are getting bearish on the market here's why i mean i don't Ooh, that was not what i wanted to do So here's why a lot of people are getting bearish on the market. Look at this. 
This is an absolutely face ripping rally since last March. So a lot of people are looking at where the market, it, like where the overall like economics or the state of the economy is at the state of our financial markets and being like, why is the spy still ripping? We broke all time highs today in the overall stock market. We had the Dow hit an all time high. I think we had the S and P 500 hit an all time high too. And it just doesn't make all that much sense. We know that retail is still pouring a lot of money in and that retail is typically the last ones in or last ones in and last ones out. Um, so Nick, thank you so much for the super chat, man. You guys don't have to send those in. Um, thank you guys so much. Nick says VW ten, uh, squeeze 10% short. I think it was 12 and a half, $1,000 GME squeeze 140% short 450. Uh, so the GameStop, uh, turning off the buy button doesn't explain this thoughts, Nick. So here's the thing. Um, I don't really fully believe that the GameStop, uh, rally to like 450 or 500 was a full short squeeze um they we know that the institutions can hide their short interest in the option chain and through a variety of other different methods as well so that's most likely what they've done in order to hide the great amount of short interest um and when you so here's the thing when you take a look at also nick thank you so much for that super um when you when you think about the different short squeezes that we've had over the past, like the last big ones, there was Volkswagen and Overstock are the two that really pop into my head. Now, there's different reasons for those stocks squeezing. Volkswagen was a was like a disclosure of ownership squeeze. Um, Porsche disclosed that they had a really large ownership in the company through stock and options, and then the German government also had a very significant ownership position as well. And that's kind of what triggered the squeeze. Now, I compare Volkswagens to uh, AMC. I think those two are more similar. And when you think of overstock, um, basically what triggered their, like one of their squeezes, because that stock just like pings up and down every once in a while, it'll just rip. Um, the reason why they had their squeeze was that dividend that they offered. And that's kind of where GameStop is at right now with their NFT crypto. So they're different situations, but they both result in the same thing. Now, let's take a look at first this ex granting accelerated approval of the proposed rule change. Um, this goes back to what we were talking about back, I think it was, yeah, late April and May. So this is on April 26th. They came out with this rule. It just gives like the history of like where this rule has gone. When we come down a little bit further, we get like a brief summer summary. Therefore, the NSCC proposes to increase its minimum required fund deposit from $10,000 to $250,000. Now, that's not a lot of money at all. Like $250,000 to a hedge fund to basically have that be the minimum required fund deposit, not a lot at all. But when you think about how many inst like funds there are and institutions that are a part of this corporation, it's like three, it's like, uh, I think it's 3,300 something. I haven't taken a look at it in a while, but that's around what it is. And that's like $850 plus million dollars that the NSCC would bring in because of this. Now, it's still not a lot of money. It's just a one-time automatic margin call. But, the, but we get an insight into – well, let me pull it up where I have it highlighted. We, get, we have an insight into the NSCC's actual activities due to this one uh, comment section – that one of TMI's mods sent me a while ago that is also a mod on my channel, but I haven't seen them around in a while. Oops, this is not the correct one. So this goes back to AppLine. So we're going to go over this a little bit more because there were things I couldn't touch upon in the video today that I just didn't want to make it too long. Um, hey, do you think BlackRock is lending their shares to hedge funds? Uh, Derek, that's a really good question. One, they could be, but at the current time, there is no proof that shows that they are. Here's the thing, though. If BlackRock is lending shares to an institution, I view that as, as a good thing. I'm optimistic, um, so that might be why. In the short term, it would allow these other institutions to short AMC, which would basically give somebody else ammo against a position that you have. Not really a smart or logical thing to do. But 
here's the thing. We know that institutions or lenders of shares can recall those shares back at any time they want. They don't have to provide a reason. And the source for that was that BNY Mellon um, FAQ that I've shown you guys a bunch in my videos. So here's the thing. Right now, the cost to borrow on AMC doesn't really seem worth it for these institutions to loan out their shares. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. Back in June, maybe they were, which is fine. I, like it, if they're going to make money on both sides, obviously that's what they're going to do. The thing is though, is that right now the cost to borrow rate is so low that it doesn't make that much sense. They're lending through ISDA. ISDA is just a, 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 what do you call it? Uh, it's just like a denotation and like a seat at the table. Um, so what BlackRock could do if they were loaning out shares is just call them back. Now, what that does is it forces them to cover, which is a, the ideal scenario. Um, so what we're getting into here is this comment from App, uh, Alpine. Now, you guys all know that when these proposed rule changes come out, they open them up for comments. When they open up, up for comments, sometimes retail can leave comments. I know on the FINRA, uh, FINRA ones, you can't, you could, um, but this one is probably just their members. So here are some of the comments. So they basically say, no, we don't want this proposed rule change to get put into place. They blame the NSCC for Robin Hood's turning off of the buy button. Uh, we went over that. But we do get an insight into where the DTCC's next steps are. STV boohoo. Yeah. So the next steps for the DTCC is right here. This is something that I don't think anybody knows, like when this is coming, what this is going to entail or how this is going to get rolled out. But on two separate occasions this year, we can see it highlighted right here. Representatives from the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation have informed Alpine that the NSCC, the National Securities Clearing Corporation, plans to seek an increase in the minimum capital requirement to $10 million for corresponding clearing firms such as Alpine, and the NSCC expects the change to be implemented in the fourth quarter of this year. Why is that important? So fourth quarter is when a lot of people think that like a lot of random things are going to kick off. Um, we know that a lot of these institutions are going to start or have started deleveraging their portfolios because one, they probably have massive gains and they know that if anything starts to happen, that they're going to get margin called. It depends on the amount of gain that they have though. If they can maintain the minimum margin requirement, then they're fine. But the margin requirement is going to go up. So it's kind of defeating the gain that they may have received from the inflationary pressures in the market. And then we come down a little bit further and right here, I think it's this one. No, oh, maybe it is this one. Yeah. So everybody always says that these proposed rule changes are BS and they don't do anything. That's not necessarily true. On February 1st, 2021, the NSCC began implementing a rule change, which altered several components of the required fund to proposed rule change. Uh, let's see. Alpine's required fund deposit skyrocket overnight, increasing from an average minimum of 2.5 million, an already enormous sum relative to the value of the positions to be cleared, to over 3.2 million, and has included several large unexpected margin call spikes that left Alpine struggling to locate capital to cover the calls. So what it looks like is that the NSCC is, is actually putting pressure on these firms. So when O02 comes out, basically saying, yeah, we're going to call you every single day in, instead of only around the times of monthly options expirations, we're not going to see that effect right away. Nobody knew this was happening to Alpine. But what it does is it creates this slow bleed out of liquidity of these institutions. Now, when you slowly bleed out the liquidity of the already existing margin requirements, and then you up the margin requirements, it just makes it even worse for everybody. So we are moving in the right direction. So this is a waiting game right now, in my opinion. I'm calling JG Wentworth. It's my money and I need it now. Uh, go for it. Let's see what happens. Oh, my OnlyFans is popping. 
Yeah, obviously. Uh, being right twice a day is still good, right? Oh my, Ken, thank you so much for that big super chat, man. I, I really appreciate that. Um, Ken, thank you so much. Thank you for, prov prov oh, I can't even read. Thank you for providing education, information, and entertainment all for free. Keep up the great work. Ken, thank you so much, man. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Um, and I think I speak for all creators when I say that. Um, thank you guys. Why didn't Alpine cover that's wild? Uh, Dandy, we don't know if Al – so here's the thing. Alpine, we don't know if they're short on AMC, but it doesn't matter. It honestly does not matter if they are short on AMC or not because we know that a lot of institutions are over leveraged on AMC or are over leveraged on a lot of other different short positions. So, uh, but we, what we do know is that the NSCC is, is slowly starting to put pressure on these institutions. So when people say these rule changes don't do anything, it's like, it's just because you don't see something happening doesn't necessarily mean that it's not. That's what I want to get across. So the other thing is, is that SEC investigation. One, they're probably investigating. We saw something come out. I think it was a Freedom of Information Act request that somebody was suggesting uh, that Citadel was being investigated over something. Cool. We, we don't necessarily know if Citadel is the big bad guy in this situation. They've just been kind of labeled the big bad guy because of their market making activities, which perfectly fair. They should not be able to have that much control over the market. Um, but there, we, we saw in that document that came out that they're not going to make their, uh, what do you call it, uh, investigations public. Now, we don't want their investigations to be public because then it tips off. Let's say it is Citadel. And Citadel now knows that the SEC is actively investigating them. What are they going to do? Bring out the shredders. Stop what they're doing until they can. They know the investigation is finished. Like, you got you to gotta think about some of these things very logically. It's like, well, what would be their logical reaction? Like, if you want, like, peace of mind that says, yeah, the SEC is doing something about this. But you, you, I don't think a lot of people understand the implications of, of the SEC telling everybody what's going on. Uh, SEC, uh, STV, forgive me, but didn't this rule already take uh, effect a while ago? The one that they, they can be margin called daily? Yes, Eric, that one, um, the automatic like daily margin call rule, that's NSCC 002, and that was approved and is implemented. So that has been in effect. This one is the minimum required fund deposit one. Let's see. Antex. Antex. What are you saying here, dude? So what Vix is saying is that he puts out cookies and milk for Santa and stays up hoping to see him, but falls asleep and the milk and cookies are gone. Honestly, Antex, that's a very good example. A lot of children have never, like, never seen the real Santa Claus. Actually, that's a bad example. <laughs> Uh, yeah, honestly, that's a terrible example. Maddie B's TV, what's up, man? Shills are out in full force messaging me, and I'm sure other uh, to get others to sell. Yeah, Maddie, yesterday on my video, like right as I posted it, it was just shill, 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 and I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Uh, where's the utilization at for tomorrow? Uh, we won't know until the morning, but we're also going to see some of these numbers flicker around. Um. Uh, probably at 8 o'clock, we're going to get our final update. But I am expecting utilization to go up tomorrow and up Friday. So me and TMI, were, or I've been joking around. It's like, oh, I have calls on utilization going over 95. If utilization goes over 95, it's good. Doesn't necessarily mean anything yet, though, because there's still 5% of shares that uh, of, of shares in that basket of shares that they can still loan out. Once it gets to 98, 99, 99.5, that's when it gets interesting. More shills on your channel means they are scared. Uh, I mean, typically the shills come out 
uh, when the stock is ripping or when the stock is tumbling. Like when when the stock is going up, the shills typically say, oh my God, it's the top. It's like, you're an idiot. You have no idea what you're talking about. Um, and when the stock is going down, the shills are like, oh my God, I got out of AMC. It's time to sell, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, well, you also have no idea what you're talking about because the short interest is going up and the utilization is going up too. And again, these are just the baseline reported numbers. The, the, the real short interest in AMC could be much higher than this. Uh, synthetic Santas everywhere. Oh boy. Sean, can you explain why for the last four to five weeks, we seem to have green Thursdays, like every day can be red, but Thursdays have consistently been green. Uh, I mean, we'd ha kind of have to speculate a little bit. Um, one of the main reasons is that they may want to let it run up on Thursdays. So they don't have to burn out their their shares that they can use to short so they can save them up all for Friday to push the stock down and have options calls run out of the money. Oh my God. TMI's avocado is in here. What's up? Uh, STV, can you talk about rolling options? Uh, are you better rolling off rolling on dips, rips? What is the best bang for your buck? I mean, Paul, ideally you would want to sell when the stock rips and buy back in what and when the stock dips. Um, but rolling options is literally just selling the option that you currently have, buying a further out expiration. It, it, you can buy the same contract. You can buy a closer one. You can buy further out ex, uh, um, further out uh, of the money contracts. You can do whatever. It's, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. Ooh, SOM dork sent me a DM. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Um, I haven't taken a look at that Citadel selling of bonds thing to the Fed. I, I have not seen that yet. So I'd have to do some more research to see how valid it is and what it, exactly it means. Options is the key. They push the price down below the strike with the most open interest. Yes, they do. Um, but here's the thing. They're most likely strategically shorting. Because look, if they know that if they push the stock down below 33 right here, well, what's below 33? 5,576 puts. Oh, 007. I don't know if I saw that one. Um, so think about this. If if the stock is now at 33, they know that they don't have they all they have to do is get it to a certain level and then the market makers have to short in order to like it, it triggers their algo in order to stay directionally neutral in selling those options so what they could be doing is that they could be shorting the stock down to a certain level letting it letting the market makers do their thing with their algorithms seeing where it settles and then reshorting to try to get it down below a different level but then there's also retail buying up the dip there's institutions buying set, like there's a lot of different variables that happens so it's not that simple what's up gary what's below 33 32 then 31 that's how numbers work yeah SCV ignored my feet picks classic car pal i didn't see them and honestly i'm kind of glad about that Sure is not a commanding answer. It's like kind of, maybe, sort of. Uh, M. Kriegs, 007, not sure what you mean there. Antics. Uh, you do, man. Hmm, avocado and milk with liquid IV. Uh, guys, we're not doing that. Oh, liquid IV is so good. See, this is why I need liquid IV to hit me up, because I literally talk about them every day. And then everybody ran with it today too, which was awesome. I saw everybody talking about Liquid IV and I was like, you guys are awesome. Ooh, Karma Rain, Koenigsegg soon. What are you going after? The Ajera, the CCX, or there's another one. I don't know the name of the new one. Uh, do you think AMC can raise the capital to pay off debt and expand with the use of BTC since it can appreciate... Uh, like they can sell. Yeah. So, uh, fee rhymes with AMC. Well, my argue. So I honestly, like, we, I'm not like, remember what I said when the voting was coming around, I don't care how you vote. I just tried to lay out the, the pros and cons and everybody to make their own decision. Personally, I think that if AMC was able to clear out their debt, 
the, okay, so here's the thing. They weren't going to be able to offer those shares until 2022 anyway. And what Adam Aaron said, not only in the earnings call, but I think he also said this in the interview with Trey last night, that they were going to be able to pay off a lot of their debt a year from now because they're going to be buying it back at a discount. They might be able to make some more money off of those Bitcoin transactions. Now, if they can do that, pay off their debt, then they know that they can offer a dividend and a dividend could be a potential squeeze catalyst. So when thinking in my head, if they were going to get those 25 million shares, like it, it wouldn't have necessarily mattered because they weren't going to be able to offer them until 2022 anyway. It just might put a little bit more strain on them for uh, offering those or, or paying off that debt. But again, I think AMC is going to be able to do it. They also want when STV president, uh, never. Uh, let's say Citadel goes down. They won't. Uh, the, here's the thing. They're so big, guys. They're so big. It's almost like saying, will the will Apple fail or something like that? I, I just don't see them being able to. It's not like, will Apple fail? But like that. See, now I'm going to get hate for that one. Vic should be sponsored by Liquid IV and Krusty the Clown. All right. Hayden XXXXX shares yesterday looking for more Hayden. There you go. We got a whale over here. Oh, most likely. Like they're going to be the, so what's most likely going to happen? Here here are some of my thoughts on the aftermath of the squeeze. I think what's going to happen is that they're going to they're going to they're going to figure out a way that's going to basically be like a oh we did something but it's really just going to be a screw you to retail. Um, I think they would regulate the options market because I don't they're never going to turn off the ability to short, and I think the options market poses the greatest threat um, to a lot of institutions. If that make if this makes sense, so I think they're going to find a way to regulate the options market. There's a couple of ways I see that happening in my head. Um, changing like the con the the amount of shares that a contract would control to make them so expensive that retail can't buy them. Because here's the thing: when you see a this is a perfect example, AMC versus GameStop. Which stock is typically more volatile in a given day? It's AMC. Why? There's more open interest on the option chain meaning that there's more shares being controlled through derivatives and those institutions have to hedge selling those contracts. So that means they have to buy and short shares all the time. So it's just pumping through the, the volume of the, of the shares and making the stock more volatile. Uh, STD, there's a bigger one than Citadel against GME. Uh, I don't think so. VIX, no company is too big to fail. Look at all the big banks in 08. Look at Enron, Madoff. Uh, Antics, yes, but there are some things that the U.S. government is not going to let fail. Uh, STV, can you explain what AA plans to do with his shares on his birthday and how does that affect the stock? Uh, it won't affect the stock, but what could happen is that like CNBC comes out and because those fudders over there uh, want to say, oh my God, Adam Aaron sold shares. We already know this is coming. He's What he's most likely going to do is since he's old, he's basically taking that money or that share amount to just plan for not his like retirement, but for like when he eventually is not around anymore. It's not like it doesn't mean it doesn't really mean anything in my opinion. Bam's model showed seven hundred percent of. S I don't know what you're talking about there, uh, pal. I haven't looked at his model. Transparency, yo, my computer screen is broke, so I can only see half my screen, dude. I saw that. SCV, what's the Liquid IV discount code? I don't have one. If you guys have a Liquid IV Connect, I would love to talk to them. All I want from Liquid IV right now. This is, this is how terrible I am at negotiating. I literally just want like one or two sticks a day for like a year. And that's it. And I'll talk about you guys every time. Uh, the government will print enough money to keep the economy from completely crashing. Ken, then here's the thing. It, it, that would just delay the problem because here's what would happen. They would print a bunch more money. We'd get more stimulus checks. A lot of money would get pushed into a lot of different sectors. Okay, so then the market gets propped up for another, I don't know, six months to a year. Then what happens? Hyperinflation, maybe not, I mean, we would get close to hyperinflation if they just kept doing that, but we would see record high levels of inflation and the Fed would be forced to raise interest rates.
because there's good inflation and bad inflation. When And it's going to get to the point eventually, most likely in 2023, where the Fed's just going to raise interest rates. And when they, when they do that, the market falls. So they would literally, again, they would just be kicking the can down the road. Uh, options might be structured like oil. Oil contracts can get rather expensive. Yeah, I mean, they would probably... I, I see. I don't know how they would regulate it. They might make one options contract control a thousand shares, ten thousand shares, and that would be like incredibly expensive. Even for a stock like AMC, the contracts would be crazy expensive. Oh, Matt. I, yeah, I know. Matt was sponsored by Liquid IV today. I saw that. That was awesome. I completely agree. Kicking uh, kicking a snowball down a mountain, it will create an avalanche. Yep. Uh, it's a 13-year bull run. Someone is betting against the market. Their bets start next week. Uh, okay, are you talking about HYG? HYG typically has those uh, on the monthly options expirations on the puts. It's almost like a no-brainer for these institutions to just throw money at those HYG puts because here's the thing. Let's look. This is why when you when you look at the market, and, and this also ties into AMC too, remember. So when we look at the puts, Let's say for the monthly August expiration, look at these eight for a 27 cent drop. You'd literally almost triple your money for a little bit more than that. It would be even more. And look at how cheap these are. And the open interest is insane. So it's so because the options are so cheap, they'll just throw money at it. And they only have to be right like one month out of the year in order to like make a killing on that on that trade uh no a one r one two eight uh we have no idea if they're going to be regulating the options market like that that's just me speculating on on what the potential aftermath um and regulations that could come out of the squeeze would you say the squeeze before another full years ago full year ago would you yeah. Uh, so within the next year, uh, I think it's very possible. But again, nobody knows when the squeeze is going to happen. Hit the like, fam. We lasted this week and ready for tomorrow and next week. Bring it, hedgies. Yeah. If you, yeah. Uh, if, also, if you guys could hit the like button, it just helps us out with the algorithm. Thank you, Hayden. Let's get that fix from Vix. Sup, Canada in the house? There we go. There we go. Uh, I would say very likely, but who knows? Yeah. Supermom says this. Oh, 24-year anniversary this month? Congratulations, Supermom. Vix, if AMC went to zero, would they still have to cover? No, but it's uh, it's not going to zero. In my opinion, they, they, it would be impossible for them to push the stock to zero. Vix, are we setting up for a baby gamma squeeze tomorrow? Look at the volume today. Uh, Beats by J? Mm, no, not really. Uh, gamma squeezes are typically, typically going to happen around monthly options expiration dates because there's more open interest in volume. Um, so you need those contracts. Oh, Fuzzy, thank you so much for the super chat, man. Shout out to all you guys sending in those supers. Um, it really means a lot. Um, so thank you for supporting the channel and me. Fuzzy says, is this a like button? Oof, I'm bad at this. Fuzzy, thank you so much, man. Yeah, AMC ain't going to zero. Yeah, I mean, Rich Greenfield does, but Rich Greenfield also probably has something wrong in his head to think AMC is going to go to a penny. And oh, those comments by Adam Aaron last night about um about that one penny price target were hilarious. I love that. 007 says synthetic super chat. <laughs> It'll happen on a Monday. Number letters, that's a bold prediction. Let's see if that holds up. Would kill for a little birthday squeeze action. Too bad the market is closed Sunday. Dalton, happy early birthday. Uh, my birthday uh, was one of those giant green candles in May. Uh, Seth, thank you so much for the super. I know we all don't like clove, but you have to think the 
option chain for next week is pretty crazy. Just saying another possible money opportunity. Seth, um, I could take a look at it. Um, but again, the, the whole squeeze play really only revolves around it, it. Like no other company, even GameStop, in my opinion, has the community backing that AMC does, especially on social media. Now, the fact that people are all up in arms, making noise, talking about AMC in a bigger way than I think any other stock right now, I think makes it the only squeeze play. Now, that does not mean that you cannot go for other plays and like generate more cash if you want to go deeper into AMC, that you can completely do that. Um, but Seth, thank you for the super. Oh, Fuzzy, thank you for sending in another super. Okay, I caught me that last one was synth you caught me that synth last one was synthetic here's the real fiber oh fuzzy thank you so much man happy birthday short the vix happy birthday to you transparency project uh my birthday was the beginning of the green candles may 26th tmi's avocado mine was the next day uh seth thank you so much for another super not saying because of a squeeze but uh, money for AMC. Yeah, completely fine. You can definitely go for that. Vix, we need that 1080p res. Guys, I actually figured it out literally 60 seconds before the stream and I have to pay more money. So I'll, I'll set that up for, maybe we'll go live tomorrow night too. I'm not sure yet, um, but we'll see. Um, but we're going to get that 1080p um, real soon. So sorry about that. I, I know it looks terrible, um, but we're going to figure it out. Hello from Ozark, 1,208 shares strong. Let's go. There we go. Imagine how many other squeezes are being prevented by synthetics and algos. Black, uh, 100%. Yeah, Larry Underpants, it is not my birthday today. Moon Gang always likes to come in and say it's my birthday um, because I think that's the joke with Matt. Um, but no, it is not my birthday. Do you think it's an ego thing with hedge funds losing to retail by dragging this on? Or is the government trying to make this as painless as possible for the U.S. economy when the squeeze goes down? Um, so here's what I think. I think that the hedge funds are one uh, in these. It doesn't necessarily have to be like hedge funds. It's just over leveraged institutions who have shorted AMC. Um, but what they're most likely doing is figuring out a way to one, take a, as small of a loss as possible, even though the loss is most likely going to be huge. Um, with all of the over leveraging going on on these shorts. Now, thinking about STV, are you dyslexic? No, I just read the chat as it's going. Uh, and then, yeah, so that new proposed rule change, NSCC 010, is really just to kind of control the fire sales that would happen in a major market event. So, yeah, I think they're trying to work. They've worked over the last six months to try to figure out a way to not let this get out of hand with the market um, because we already had a very significant, like basically crash in last March and they don't really want to have that happen again, even though we ripped up right after. They just don't want to have to deal with that. The Fed, I don't think, and the government cannot handle printing that much more money and writing those checks. Uh, do you think they can change the algorithms to work against us? I mean, the algorithms are, are just doing what the algorithms do. Like they're going to sometimes help us. They're going to sometimes work against us. Like in June, most likely the algorithms switched to buy. Um, and they were helping us. We saw a lot of FOMO gamma squeeze. Some shorts may have covered, um, some force, uh, share recalls, but there was a lot of buying volume. Um, uh, the ideal world, uh, wouldn't a squeeze benefit the economy post-crash with retailers having the power to pump the U.S. economy and abroad? Uh, yeah, so the whole capital gains argument and basically if retail investors who are mainly the largest like group of consumers just suddenly had a bunch of money, um, we would see a significant amount of of basically consumption uptick in the United States. Like after the taxes got paid, we would see a lot of spending, which would be good. Um, Hayden, thank you so much for the super chat, man. Really appreciate it. From the mod squad, thanks for all you do. Shout out to the mods. You guys work long hours helping us out with our streams. Um, so thank you guys so much. Hayden, thank you so much for that super. Um, I believe there's a way for AMC to clear uh, most or all of its debt in three months. 
Would you consider a private combo after the stream? Yeah, shoot me a DM. Uh, AMC squeezes, take profits, buy puts in the entire market, sell out once the market is down, then buy options set out uh, for a year, sell, buy Lambo and relax. Giovanni, that is a awesome plan. I hope it really works out for you and you can time it. Fuzzy says, uh, thank you so much for the, another super, man. Um, are we friends on Twitter? If not, we need to be. Same name, uh, brother, man. I have some fun stuff for the AMC Minecraft competition coming up soon. That is interesting. Fuzzy, I will find you right now. Fuzzy, thank you so much. Uh, how can us non shill slash bots support the mods for their hard work? I think they're going to start doing a mod stream now. So uh, you guys can support them by just going and tuning into their stream. Um, Seth, thank you so much, man. Uh, one more because you deserve it. Hard work pays off. Seth, thank you so much. SCV never told me if he liked my MIT dark pool pecking order DD. M. Kriegs, I have not seen that. Uh, it doesn't matter. Our game is un unbreakable. Buy and hold. Yeah, think about the different strategies being utilized by like the two different sides of this trade. The shorts are one potentially naked shorting, which is also the problem of the banks and the prime brokers. They're creating synthetic short positions on the option chain. They're finding a way to kick down the can with failures to deliver. Hide their short positions in the option chain, and all the people on the other side of this trade have to do or a plan to do is just buy and hold the stock. It's so, it's just the most simple thing. They're doing all of these gymnastics over on the short side and all the other side is doing is just buying and holding. It's very simple. Um, Ashraf, thank you so much. Um, has anyone noticed a sudden but mild drop this month in blue chip NASDAQ stocks? They are trimming down. Ashraf, uh, it's very possible. I will take a look at that though. Um, but thank you so much. Uh, Jorge, thank you so much for the super. I am buying on all the dips until I get to 2,000 shares. My average is still under 20. That way, every time it goes up, I'm two thousand. Uh, I'm up two thousand dollars until the squeeze. Jorge, that's an awesome idea. Um, good luck with that, man. Um, Fuzzy, thank you so much for another super. You guys are super generous, guys. Thank you so much. Also, my goal is a Tesla Model S Plaid with a plate that reads. Not a penny. That's a good one. Dreaming big. I uh, I stream on D Live. That's where the Minecraft will be. Okay, awesome, Fuzzy. That's interesting. Uh, M Creek says STV you should check it out. Good paper. Just came across a data analytic web page that tracks short exempts and spikes in volume. I'll DM it to you on Twitter. M Creeks, thank you so much. I will definitely take a look at that. uh 007 says i thought you were setting up the mod stream blue hoodie m james there's a blue hoodie now uh it's the one that says short low cover high with the bowl on it i'm 99 sure that there's a blue version of it if you want it but the merch is literally just so i can make stuff and then i buy it for myself uh, i bought three thousand shares of my ira is that it is that a good tax move? Um, it depends. The Asian Tim, if you sell shares in your IRA, they might, they're, I'm pretty sure there's a early withdrawal penalty. Um, so it depends. It, I don't know what the, like the exact penalty is, but most likely if you wanted to take that money out, there's going to be a penalty if you're withdrawing it earlier than you should be. Is there an STV crusty tube sock? A uh, classic car pal? No. <laughs> Uh, is anyone jumping on the stream tonight with you, Vix? Yeah, we're going to get a TMI on in about 40 minutes. Hey, SCV, did you see the Meet Kevin live interview with Ross Gerber two hours ago? Amazing interview. Guy was taking dings at the big players. No, I haven't, but I also really want to get Meet Kevin on one of these streams. I know he's very busy running for office, uh, but I would love to get him on here. Big fan of that guy. There's a user with that name, Classic Car Pal. Yeah.
Uh, Vic, shouldn't we call out uh, ping pools, not dark pools? And I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Oh, what's up, White? Hello, Vix and Apes. Uh, send the link to Keenan and Trey. Um, I could do that, but I don't want to bother them. Like, I don't want to just have our DMs just be like me spamming them with the link. Like, if they want to come in, uh, we'll try to schedule it before or uh, or we'll just see what happens. I don't, I don't want to bother those guys. Everybody's so busy. Busy. Uh, Antics. So much. Thank you so much for that super chat. This is for you to use at the local strip club. Tell them Antics sent you, even though they won't know who I am. Then yell YOLO. Antics? All right, man. Thank you. Um, I think tomorrow we might be able to do a cool mod stream. I think we should set that up. I want to I wanna let all the mods know that we're doing it so we can get everybody on. I don't want anybody to miss it. I wonder what AA's live stream chat burner account name is. Nando. I think it's Nando390. That would be my guess right there. Adam Aaron, if you're watching, I love you, you beautiful stinky ape. Let's see. Hey, I was hiking Colorado, no network. Any no uh, noteworthy news for today? Yeah, so we got the uh, notice for accelerated approval for NSCC 005, which is the up up like the uptick in the initial required fund deposit which is basically saying hey in order to be like a member of the nscc in in order for us to like clear your trades uh we're now going to require you to deposit two hundred fifty thousand dollars at the minimum instead of ten thousand dollars at the minimum so a 2500 percent increase and that's going to generate about 850 i think it's i think the number was 877 million um last time i calculated it for the national securities clearing corporation Uh, the guy did make a comment about AMCCO. Wasn't a good one. I'm um, not sure. Uh, will it go above 35 to, uh, 33 tomorrow? Sorry, I can't read. Um, it will if there's enough buying volume and if the buyers are willing to buy at those higher prices and there's not too many sellers trying to sell right around where the bids are. How do you know AA stinks? I don't know. It's just a, it's just a, what do you call it? It's just a phrase. After this, uh, after squeeze, I'm donating half my fleet of sailing yachts to a floating doctor's program to strengthen their hospital ship program. Adam, that is awesome. Uh, did y'all see the, Hold video on Twitter. It was Wilson Phillips. I laughed so freaking hard uh, applying that to AMC SCV. I doubt you know who that is. Sean, I don't, but if you send it to me, I'll take a look. Can you talk about the infrastructure bill uh, and will that prolong the squeeze if it passes? Greg, I honestly need to take a look at that because I haven't read too deep into it. Um, what, but what I think is going to happen is that the infrastructure bill is going to pass. But the issue is, is that it's like this tug and pull. I said it again. Uh, it's a give and take with, <laughs> with, uh, the Democrats and the Republicans. So if the infrastructure bill passes, then they're not going to raise the debt. They're not going to do anything about the debt ceiling. They're just going to scorch earth it and let it ride and see what happens. That's the, that is m the most likely outcome in my opinion. Vix, are you into sneaker reselling? I was for a bit, but not really. Yeah, Henry, I know, I know, I know, I know. I said it again. I said it in one of my videos and then everybody everybody got me for it. Love your approach to the daily videos. Provide great analysis and take on a different approach in your videos. Keep up the good work. Shiraz, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, yeah, here come the tug and pull comments. I say one thing and then you guys freak out. <laughs> Let's see. It's the government. It's definitely a tug of bull. Yeah. Okay, guys. Whoops. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, the debt ceiling thing is it, it it's in uh, late September um, or mid September. We're going to start seeing like downgrade news, credit, da- credit rating downgrade, um, credit worthiness downgrade of, of the United States government. And we, I think I've gone over this enough times where that everybody knows what happens next. Um, if we get downgraded, markets are going to freak out a little bit. Let's see. Does Robinhood have a larger market cap? Why does Robinhood have a larger market cap than anyone else? Uh, I think they've already addressed that, but I'm pretty sure it's just a glitch or a delay in how they get their data. I demand you grow a beard. The beard of doom? Uh, I can't. It just looks stupid. I have to shave tonight because my facial hair looks stupid. Uh... (laughs) Antics. I know. I know. I know. I know. Uh, what else we have? Ooh, we have this too. Reverse repos today. Second day in a row above a trillion. Now that shouldn't be happening. Um, so we actually, I think I said this on TMI stream yesterday that we were going to do a little reverse repo talk in this stream, uh, or the stream that I was going to do last night, but then we were just watching, uh, the Trey Adam Aaron interview, which I think was a lot more productive. Um, so let me pull up another thing that we need to talk about with the reverse repos. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. So first we know that the reverse repo market is absolutely out of hand right now. It's over a trillion dollars in these reverse repurchase agreements every single day. Now, oh, this is going to give me an ad blocker thing, I think. All right. Why is demand for Fed's reverse repo facility is surging again? Last updated May 26th. So at this time, the, the reverse repos were like five, six, seven hundred billion at the most. Either there is too much cash or not enough collateral. So there's a collateral crisis going on right now. We already know that. But there's also this cash aspect to it. Now, the reason for that is that when the banks have too much cash in their in, in like in deposits because the fed has just pumped money out people were getting stimulus checks people were making lots of money on different things that now these banks just have so much cash now they have to pay interest on that cash so it's gotten to the point where it is too costly for them to pay these interest payments and it is now a liability on their balance sheet so When we think about what's going on right now with the banks, they don't want all of this cash. So they need a place to park this cash in order to maintain these regulatory standards. Here's how this connects back to AMC. M Kriegs 007. Thank you so much for the super. Um, Really, really appreciate it. Let's see. Why not include Lady Apes? Bunny Stocks Up is a January OG who is a boss trader and does great TA. She bought in at two and holding since. M. Kriegs, I actually have not seen that. I can definitely reach out to her and see if she will come on. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, so reverse repos. So we know that a lot of these banking institutions, one, there's probably a collateral issue and there's a cash issue, but they're also over lever- oh, like helping these other institutions over leverage. So there's this weird, again, give and take, I got it right this time, with the hedge funds and the banks and the Fed. So there's all this money circulating around. Now, if the one of those, if like the party stops with one of them, it's going to affect everything. Like the bank could just get to a certain point and is going to tell these over leveraged institutions, we don't even want your collateral anymore because we just can't take it in. So that could be one of those margin call scenarios, like a big margin call where these institutions are just like, yeah, no, even if you can come up with the liquidity, we're closing you out of this position because we can't keep going on this route. Let's see. When wife changing money, Walter, if your wife has uh, AMC shares, it could be husband changing money too. Watch out. There's always two sides to that same coin. Transparency project. Thank you for the super. When super chat. (laughs) Thank you, man. When sponsored by Liquid IV. I mean, I sponsor myself with Liquid IV.
went oh my god you guys are nuts lady apes are great they are it doesn't matter man woman anything you're an ape you're an ape doesn't matter if you hold one share a hundred thousand shares a million shares you are just as important to this movement as anybody else stv for governor yeah but then i wouldn't be able to hang out with you guys all the time and they would look, take one look at me and be like, this kid? No. Not going to vote for him. When career changing money? That is a better question. Why do you guys want to change your wives so bad? I know it's a joke, but like. Uh, SCV, what was the short interest in utilization percentage at the end of May and beginning of June? Oh, we can definitely go over that. And then what else, Eric? Eric's always asking good questions. Also, is there any simulation, similarities to where we are now? I'll show you exactly where we are on this chart. Uh, utilization, short interest. Oh, man. Why are these the same color? That is just annoying. All right. So these two yellow lines, I know it's really annoying to read. This top one's utilization. This bottom one is estimated short interest so when we're looking at this we saw the short interest start to climb and the utilization start to climb back in the beginning of april and by the end of april or the middle of april we got to 100 percent utilization and 18.8 percent short interest as a percentage of the free flow we were chugging along for about a month after we got to that high amount of utilization before that massive run-up in june so remember there's always going to be a couple of different factors that are playing into like why we have these price movements like yeah utilization high leads the way to a four share recall increases the borrow fee rates makes it harder for these lenders to get their hands on shares to loan out and it makes it harder for those who want to take out loans get those loans same thing with the short interest we saw the short interest climb we saw it dip a little bit come back up and right when we saw that big run up we were at 17.47 now most likely after that june run up there were a lot more apes that joined the movement because they were part of that FOMO rally that really helped us get up to those higher levels. And they didn't know not to turn off their share lending. These could just be maybe older people or people that aren't on YouTube or Twitter all day that don't know about this share lending issue, but have an idea of this short squeeze play. So here's where that leads to. When we're talking about the utilization, it's the amount of shares that institutions are willing to lend out. So let's say it's 100 versus the amount of shares that have been lent out. But let's say after June, that 100 shares that institutions were willing to lend out now jumped up to 120. So we could be at 107 million shares on loan, but let's say there's much more shares that they're willing to lend out. It's, it, then it's going to be harder to get up to that 99 to 100% utilization. So we could see one of those recalls at 97, but most likely we're still going to have to get up to that 100% utilization in order to see anything happen. But again, short interest is climbing, utilization is climbing, they're continuously shorting. And when we look today, 2.86 million borrowed against AMC, and we went up 4.86%. So in my opinion, I do think we have some ways to go to the downside. It's only logical because we're, we're going to see more shorting. It, regardless, there's nothing we can do about, about them shorting or, or not shorting the stock, like they're just going to short, they're just going to keep doing it, kicking the can down the road until they can't anymore. Like they physically cannot. So somebody forces them to not be able to do that anymore. So then, Ooh, where was I going with this? Where was I going with that? Ooh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry guys. Can somebody remind me in the chat? Like the last couple things I said, Ooh, we were talking about short interest utilization, today oh how we still have a little bit of uh a little bit of ways to go down so the shorts are going to keep shorting nothing we can do about it and in order for us to get up to those higher utilization levels where we could see those recalls um and the institutions really have the pressure put on them they're they have to short more that's like the, the and it's going to happen so it's really a waiting game until we can get to those levels in terms of like the concrete data there could be an outside factor that really changes things 
Uh, also not a guarantee that all 4.4 million return shares available are available to borrow again tomorrow. Ken, that's very true. And it's also possible that all, like all those 4.4 million shares were not shorted shares. You said you were going to take your pants off. No, I didn't. That's a lie. If AMC drops to 30 or below tomorrow, I'm going to pick up a thousand more shares getting ready for Tendy Town. Lucas Valentine. There we go. Eric, anytime, man. You're always asking good questions in here. When coming out as Mini Shapiro? Guys, why does everybody call me Mini Ben Shapiro? I don't get it. People always call me random things. It's funny. I get it. But no, 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 no. You guys fixed Rogue's back. Uh, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, I've been hearing about these 100K or more floors, and I'm still learning. Is that even realistic? How did people come up with those numbers? Um, so very briefly, because we could. this is kind of what we've been working on for like the last eight months me since March, that there's the assumption and oh, here we go. Hold on. Before we get into that, we got a new update to the short interest. 19% right now. Returned shares went down. So I don't know how that works, but the return share amount went down and now we have a borrowed uh, change against AMC at about 4 million shares. Current short interest, 19%. So we see these updates um, on, on Ortex throughout the night stream so if you guys want to like figure out what the ortex numbers are before you go to bed going into the next day this is probably the best place to see it unless you have an account um so going back to those floor numbers so there's a speculation and assumption that there are a lot of these like synthetic shares out there for amc counterfeit shares that are not supposed to exist so the reason why people think that it can get to those high numbers is that when the shorts start to cover they have to buy back if that theory is right, we saw with the save out that it could be between one and five billion shares. Those were the numbers that the statistics showed. Um, they could be correct. It was within a 99% probability. So there's a 1% chance, according to that specific statistical analysis, that the actual number of shares was outside of that one to $5 billion range. Very possible because the data probably wasn't uh, a random enough sample. So when we're thinking about why the stock could potentially reach those high levels, they would have to buy back every single share of AMC multiple times. So they would have to buy back all 513, all 513 again, and just keep doing it. Now, the thing is, is that it comes down to like a supply and demand argument because retail investors, the apes who are holding AMC are like diehard holding till like life changing, or as you guys like to call it, wife changing money. So people aren't going to want to sell. So it takes those 513 million shares and shrinks it much down, much, much, much smaller because if people are not willing to sell, then there is less of, of a supply of something in a really, really, really high amount of demand. So they have to entice those people that hold it to sell. And what happens then is that the price goes up. So it's like a test. It's like, let's say you are at an auction for something and you bid $100. Then somebody outbids you. Then somebody outbids you. And it just keeps going up and up and up until that's it. And people are willing to sell at those prices. That is why people think that it can get to those high numbers. There's a geometric mean argument too as well that kind of like helps um, it's like not the, the whole argument with the geometric means is like, not everybody's going to sell at the top. So it's trying to calculate like how much strain, like in terms of a dollar amount, it would put on the overall financial market. Um, and I think at 500 K it was like, it still wasn't like that bad according to the geometric mean theory. But again, here's the thing. Nobody knows what's going to happen with this situation. Theoretically, AMC could go as high as possible. Like, infinity minus one if the squeeze happened theoretically yes if we are correct which i think we are in that there's way more shares out there than there most likely should be then yeah it could theoretically go as high as it wants to but again there's all these other outside factors that we don't know how play into it so hopefully that answered your question what is blah blah i don't understand you guys making fun of me for random rambling? Uh, totally not. The FBI says when buying puts, what's the end game? For instance, 
I bought a $9 put on Clove this morning. How would I execute that? Or do I just sell for a profit? Totally not the FBI. What a put gives you is the right to sell stock. Um, so here's, here's the thing. If you don't already own underlying shares, it would make no sense to exercise because most likely the dollar amount gain on the contract is going to be much more than the intrinsic value of the option. W what that means is that the intrinsic value is just the difference between what the stock is trading at and the strike price. So let's say the, the, so you think you said $9 put. So let's say the stock is trading at eight. So the intrinsic value of that option would be $1. So you would make a hundred dollars. But there's other, like, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, like opinions of value on it. So there would be like the time premium, the implied volatility premium, the all these other things. So let's say that one that option that had a one hundred dollar intrinsic value was actually trading at two hundred dollars. But if you had that put, you would then go buy shares at eight, and you'd have the right to sell them at nine. So you would only get that one hundred dollar profit. But if you just sold the contract, you'd make two hundred bucks. Uh, there's so many shares that we can afford a ton of paper hands on the uh, on the way when it goes. Number letters, yeah, uh, yeah, that is really what like that that because people get worried about paper hands like institutions. But at the same time, if there's enough people that do not want to sell, it still shrinks the basket of shares way down that the institutions have to use to cover. Great explanation. Thank you guys. You can subtract any number from infinity and the remainder is still infinite. It is. Vix, did you see that the Fed bought a ton of triple B rated bonds from Citadel? Seems pretty odd since those bonds are worthless. I think triple C would be worthless. Please check this out. Seems very important. Uh, fly high and enjoy. I will check that out. Um, I'll take a look at that tomorrow. If you guys have something on it, just shoot me a DM on Twitter. That's probably the easiest way for me to see it. Um, and then it'll like, I don't want to be selfish, but it'll save me a bunch of time because there's definitely going to be other things going on. And I don't want to just be like running around trying to find like this one thing when I could spend my time, like putting together something else that would be better for you guys to learn. If that makes sense. Uh, SCB, what indicator determines how high the squeeze can go short interest number of shares borrowed? Uh, nothing really. It, it's this, in my opinion is like a, a black swan event. We've seen them happen a lot. The March crash, black swan. Sometimes there's a earnings black swan, but those are like not really black swans. Um, but it's like a really, really major event that's not supposed to happen. This is what I would consider AMC and GameStop. The fact that it was allowed for them to overshort these stocks such a significant amount, we have no idea what the outcome of this is going to be once they close out a lot of these positions. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Also guys, I do have an Instagram now. So if you guys want to go follow me over there, I'm trying to branch out on a lot of the platforms. Um, so I put it in the chat and I'll pin it to the top. Um, just just so in case anything happens, you guys have a way to find me. If you guys don't use Twitter, don't use Instagram. My name on the backup channel, Twitter and Instagram are all the same. Um, so with everything that's been going on with like AMC YouTubers, I just want to make sure that you guys, if you want to have a way to get in contact with me, if something happens. SCV when McChicken for Rogue. Guys, last winter when I was putting on a little weight, I did some disgusting things at McDonald's. I think at like midnight one time I went um, to McDonald's and I bought like three McDoubles and three McChickens. I was hungry. When OnlyFans, guys, you already know this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. SCV 8 Father has apparently challenged you to a 100-yard sprint. Are you aware and do you accept the challenge? Um, I was not aware until you just said that in two I would not be running anywhere near Ape Father just because of all of the dumb FUD that this person has put out. Um, I would much rather do the challenge that TMI suggested. Hit that like button for my unborn child and my soon-to-be wife. Fingers crossed, 007. There you go. Let's see. 
Uh, what's the ORTAC say for IWM? Let's take a look. Oops, that's I. Oops. Boop, boop. All right, let's take a look at ORTAC for I. Ooh. Utilization 100%. Let's look. So utilization for IWM back in, where is it? Right here. Where is it? Yeah, okay. So the utilization for IWM didn't really change throughout the big run-up uh, in AMC. Shares on, yeah, so they don't really have short interest data on this. But let's go back to AMC and see if it changed. Nope, still 19%. Tom, I love the jokes, uh, but this question is actually important. Vix, did you see that the Fed bought? Yeah, okay, Tom. Um, I have heard a lot of people talking about the Fed buying Citadel triple B rated bonds. Um, I'm going to take a deeper look into that either after the stream tonight or tomorrow because one, I just want to give like enough time for me to like look into it. Um, cause I don't, I just don't want to like rereading all the stuff on stream. Also, actually we could try to do that. If you guys have a link to something, um, Send it to me. And please don't send me like a, just a tweet that says they did it. Like I want to see the actual bonds that they bought. If you have it. SV, are you aware that I challenge you to a McChicken eating contest? Winner gets to eat the remaining McChickens. Uh, Matt, let's, I mean, I, right now you would probably beat me, but like if I were to try to put on weight again, nobody's beating me. What's your OnlyFans? I don't. It's a joke. I don't have an OnlyFans. <laughs> when six nine four twenty? Did you guys see that the difference between the estimate and the amount of revenue that AMC had was like sixty nine million four hundred twenty thousand? I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Let's see, just a, oh boy, Seth, there you go. Vix, only toes, only fans, you guys are nuts. Vix, eight father, clearly going through midlife crisis, failed music path. I mean, if he is struggling, like I feel for him, but at the same time, like if you're a creator, you're held to a standard and you can't be saying wild things. And using other people's names to try to boost yourself up. You can't do that. Uh, SCB, when are you guys going to include Matt in all your big streams? He's like one of the leader apes. Ryan, come on. Matt is always invited to come on the stream. I've sent it. So we have a couple of like Twitter DMs. And I'll shoot the link into like those DMs. But at the same time, you have, you have to understand that one, he streams and works all day long for everybody and it's probably not good for like him his like trajectory consistency to like come on night streams all the time like it i would love to have him on he's always welcome to come on um i've talked to him a couple of times real good dude um yeah he's always welcome to come on i actually somebody told me that somebody was like trying to make like a dr a new drama a weekly drama that matt wasn't invited on my stream and i was like it's sitting in there and i was like that is just the most wild that like he was busy <laughs> yeah matt was just talking about this on his stream today he streams researches all day he needs time to himself it, uh, yeah 100 percent. it's not healthy to be doing this stuff all the time like when you're really deep into this like I'm starting to get better at like taking a step back and like putting my phone down. Uh, but it's, it's one, it's hard to step away because you're so interested in what's going on. Um, and two, it's just not good for you all the time to be like online all the time. <laughs> Sean, throw it shade. <laughs> no, never. Uh, when the squeeze happens, many people spoke about shareholders selling all the shares. What is your opinion on keeping X amount of shares depending on how much someone owns? April, it all depends on what you want to do personally. Uh, for me, just for like sentimental value and that like I support the company over the long term, I'm always going to own some AMC shares. Um, and after the squeeze, because 
after the squeeze, we are most likely going to have a boatload of money. I will vote in favor of whatever is going to be best for the company going forward ever. They want to do offerings, go for it. They want to do some crazy stuff that might decrease the share price, but is going to create long-term value for the company, go for it. They've done a big thing for me. So then I'm going to be returning the favor with whatever amount of shares that I have left over. Uh, Matt's duck suspenders. Thank you so much for the super chat. I hold uh, Matt's pants up. What do you need to know? Quack, quack. That's funny. Uh, Ryan, SCB, sorry if that came off wrong. You all rock. I know there's no drama between you all. Uh, just together is always stronger. Yeah, Ryan, uh, I get it. I think people just had questions. Um, but yeah, no, he's always invited. Tom, I have all the links you need for the Fed buying those bonds from Citadel. How should I send them to you? Uh, post them in the comments here on Twitter. Tom, uh, shoot me a DM with them on Twitter. And I'll take a look at that. Uh, we can actually do that right now, I think. Because Triple B, let me look at a uh, corporate bond structure really quick. Triple B should not be the lowest. It should go like Triple A, Double A, Single A. It depends on how they do it. And then like Triple B, Double B, Single B, or it's the other way. It's like A, Double B, Double A, Triple A, um, or it's or, or it's like uh, Senior Secured, Super Senior Secured, like stuff like that. Uh, I will end up selling every share I have. Then when AMC settles, I will be a whale shareholder. Sean, I think a lot of people are thinking about that too. And I have thought about doing that as well. Uh, Matt is legit, especially with what he is doing this week. Donated to St. Jude. Yeah, I bought a shirt. I, I liked, I really liked the cause that he was donating to. And I liked his shirt. So I bought one. How would the Fed buy bonds from Citadel? Well, companies offer debt sometimes in order to... Uh, just raise more money. Now, if they bought some of their already existing bonds, then it wouldn't really matter. Like if they if they had already sold the what do you call it? If they had already sold the bonds to somebody else, and then the Fed bought the bonds from those people, it's still them buying Citadel's bonds, but they're not giving Citadel direct money. Um, so it depends on if Citadel did like a bond offering. But I'd have to look into all the logistics of it um, to see if that's actually like legit. Uh, Juan, thank you so much for the super invite. Max Maher, bro, stonk Jesus. Um, I think I've seen a couple of Max's videos. He's a really smart guy. I definitely have him on. Uh, there are a couple of people that I definitely want to try to get on. Some of them you will know. Some of them you may not know. But definitely all of the people that I try to bring on here are going to have a lot to offer. Uh, Tom says, all right, but here's my thing. My name isn't Tom Siegel, and I'm certainly not sharing my real name on here. So keep an eye out in your DMs for a minute. And please don't say my name on stream. Tom, awesome. I, I don't share my name. Um, yeah. Uh, if you, yeah, uh, yeah, that's going to be the only way for you to get them to me. If you're not comfortable with it, I can always find it. Uh, but yeah, Twitter DMs is going to be the best way to do it. And I honestly won't see it for a little bit. Maybe if I, unless I look at it right now, but I won't, I won't share it. All right, I did find a link to it. Let's see. Citadel Finance completed a six hundred million dollar uh, five year senior notes due March twenty six at T plus two seventy five or twenty five basis points through early whispers. The issue. Okay, let's pull this up. I just did a couple of searches and here we go. All right, here's the Citadel thing. Citadel Finance places six hundred million. Ooh, what is this? This may not even be really Citadel. Hold up, we're gonna have to look at this. Okay, honestly, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a look at this. This may not be a real Citadel because I made the mistake one time of saying that the Citadel in Ecuador, who was engaging in market manipulation, was like and got raided by their regulatory agencies, was like the Citadel that we all know and hate. Um, but it wasn't them. So this needs to get verified. I'm gonna look at this right now. Because uh, we just have to, one, we have to verify that it's the real. Uh, okay. It, okay. Let's see. Citadel LLC. I don't see. Oh, it says, hold on. Let's see. Citadel Finance LLC. Let's look. All right. 
this may not. So what you have to keep in mind is that Citadel has so many different. Oh, yeah. Jackson's come on here before. Jackson's always welcome to come on and hang out. So here, here's the thing. I've never heard of Citadel Finance LLC. But Citadel has so many different corporations. Just going off of what this is, I mean, the Fed buys corporate bonds all the time. So they needed to raise $600 million for something. Okay. Let's, I mean, that's not that much money in terms of how much Citadel is holding. Let me, I'm trying to look and see if there's a like Citadel Finance LLC registration. Citadel Advisors, Citadel Securities. Citadel Securities, Citadel Financial. Uh, see, the, the thing is, uh, we don't know if... Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah. Whoa, we had a spammer in here. TMI. Dude, TMI is always on here. TMI is going to probably pop in in a little bit. All right. Hmm... Citadel has a lot of Cayman Island businesses accounts more than U.S. businesses. M. Kriegs, yeah, I'm just trying to. The only thing is, is that I just want to make sure that the Citadel we're looking at here is actually Citadel because I'm looking up Citadel Finance LLC right now, and it's just coming up with like Citadel Securities, Citadel Advisors, and nothing says Citadel Financial. So be careful. Here, Fed. What's going on? What is this? Citadel Securities. What is this one? Secondary market corporate facility eligible sellers have been added to the list. Okay. Yeah, but why is it under... See, that's the weird thing about this. It, SV, uh, this isn't the article... Yeah, yeah, Tom. Uh, uh, that's the first one that I saw pop in. Uh, all right, I'm looking. Is it the Tom? Did you send the Reddit thing too? Is that what it was? All right, we're gonna make okay, we're gonna let's just go into it. Citadel and Susquehanna have turned to the Federal Reserve for assistance selling their junk bonds in return for liquidity support. Nope, I'm sure you got it all wrong. Secondary. Yeah, so I've seen they've been added. I saw that. But I don't see anything. Hold on. Citadel LC Finance. Um... Okay, so the th the Reddit thing that I have is 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 looking at the same two things that I just looked at. So when we're looking at this, one, it honestly could be. I'm just trying to verify, guys. That's the only thing because I've run into the problem in the past where a Citadel that we think is the Citadel that we're looking at is not actually the Citadel that we need. Um, it looks legit. Uh, I'm going to have to do some more research into it. But here's the thing. If the Fed is buying Citadel's junk bonds, I don't know why they're calling them junk. I, this might just be the one level into junk. It's not that bad. Yeah, triple B. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll take a deeper look into that, guys. But it's very interesting. Um, it wouldn't really matter. Mainly, they're just getting more liquidity. When AMC Vigilante on STV stream, ooh, we could set that up. If I go live tomorrow, we could do mods and Vigilante. Um, and we could just have fun tomorrow night. Look at Ortex VIX, big change. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, look what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. Now the return shares jumped up to 8.19 million, down from like 3 million. Now the borrowed shares went up to 14.14 million, a borrowed change of about 6 million shares. 
And the short interest now, 19.34%. So here's where, what, what we're getting back into. One, the price has just been getting pinged around in this 30 to $40 range. It breaks above 40, it breaks below 30, but it really just comes back into this range. But again, the shorts are continuously trying to beat this stock down. This is a giant borrowed against AMC today. Here's the thing, though. They may not have shorted today, and we could be in for a red day tomorrow. I just want everybody to be prepared. We didn't see a really significant decrease in, like, uh, it, like when you looked at Stonko Tracker, it wasn't that crazy. Um, but 14.14 million shares borrowed today is a lot. What percentage of that would be, like, the float? Less than 10, less than five, less than two and a half. It would be like, that would be like around, I think it would be under one. Eh, it's not that big, but yeah, every Friday, Sean. Yeah, guys. Okay. So with this, we would, we would need to be a little bit prepared for a little bit of volatility tomorrow. Maybe to the downside, we could see them attack with those 14 million shares. But again, it's just using the shares that they've already taken out. We're going to see the utilization go up even higher, which is just better for us over the next couple of months. Uh, M. Krieg sent you the master list of all the Citadel Securities Corporations found in the world to your Twitter DM. Hopefully you see this. M. Kriegs, thank you so much. I will take a look at that. Ethan, thank you so much for the super. Um, really, really appreciate all you guys sending those in. Um, hey, STV, it might be worth commissioning uh, a background from Etsy and Fiverr. Your content is great, and it might reach a wi my wider audience with a sexy rapper. Um, are you talking about, Ethan, um, I'll look out for another message from you. Are you talking about, like, back here or, like, for the stream? Daniel said to check your email. Ooh, I thought Daniel sent me his email. Oh, uh, Daniel, um, I actually can't. I do not have a direct line. So I could, I can like get, I know people who can get into contact with him, but um, I personally don't have direct line. So we'd have to take a look at that. I will check your email though um, and take a look at that. This is not good news for my sugar mama goals. I mean, it, guys, th this is something that we have to be prepared for. If we see red tomorrow, okay, cool. I'm I'm personally looking to eh, I'm not gonna say that. I'm looking for the stock to go into the twenty dollar range and it, on it. Oh, I'm trying to think of a way to word this. It is very possible that we don't go into the twenty dollar range and we also see the utilization go up to almost a hundred percent. Very possible. But I think what's very likely is that we see the stock go into the high twenties and then the utilization gets really high and we could see one of those last shakeouts right before we see the next really, really large leg up. And remember, the hedging and the covering that's going to be, like the little bit amount of cover that's going to be happening on the next rip is going to be way more costly to institutions than the first run up. And remember, we had a over 100% day at one point on one of the, on one of the big run ups. I think it was like a 60% day followed up by a 100% day. Um, if we look at where we're at right now, that would get us to about $66 a share. Just one 100% day. I know that's crazy, but uh, like 100% in a day is nuts, but we're not that far away. Aria, thank you so much for the super. I really appreciate all of you guys sending those in. Um, really means a lot. Oh, Aria, thank you so much for another one, man. He says, hey, you, keep it up. Aria, thank you so much. AMC really doesn't like the 20s. I don't feel like I can hang in the 20s for any significant amount of time. Chris, I'm with you on that one. I'm just full, I'm just preparing. Um, because look at the, all those shares that were borrowed. They're gonna be used against us in order to try and short. Um, but again, it doesn't matter because the shorts haven't covered. And that's the whole like crux of this play. It's like, okay, people are thinking we bought in, we're gonna wait till the shorts cover, the squeeze is gonna happen, we're all gonna pick our own sell prices and where we want to get out and what we're comfortable with. And then that's it. We'll move on to the next one. But everything in between people like to freak out. I get it about the price fluctuations about like people getting worried about the price going down or getting really excited when the price goes up. And I think it's like, okay, the price could go to 500 or it could go to five. Not saying either of those have happened. Remember that is just an example. Um, but again, if the short interest was still like 20, 30% at 500, or if it jumped up to way higher at those lower levels, it's they still haven't covered.
Uh, tons of pinning happens every Friday. I'm going to assume they want it below 30. Uh, totally not the FBI. Uh, they're going to try to push it to... Looks like right... Uh, yeah. Right near 30, there's a decent amount of options that they would need to hedge. By, by hedging... Uh, and the way to hedge those is to short. So they have to push it to a certain level where they know these institutions are going to short. Uh, M. Kriegs, I will look at that right now. Oh my God. I can't even read this. All right, hold on. Are these alphabetical? I'd have to zoom in and I can't like zoom in on this. M. Kriegs, I'm going to have to look at that on a different device because I am technologically handicapped. I only send DD stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, SV, could they be getting ready to dump those shares due to our first negative bit of news in weeks with Sony delaying the release of Venom? Uh, they could be, but uh, like, mm, I think they're just going to use those shares to try to mess with a lot of retail investors' heads. They're going to try to mess with a lot of people's heads and entice people to get worried freak out emotional and maybe sell for a loss or sell for the gain that they have for me i don't really care i i i honestly I, I think the reason why i can say that with such confidence is that like just think about it i'm a college student i have a lot of time it's like if i have to hold this position for a while i'm fine i'd literally like i don't have like a job right now that i have to go to every day besides you know like hanging out with you guys all the time um but this is like fun it doesn't feel like work I had a job last summer. I was working for my brother and I was like, oh, I hate this, but that's besides the point. Um, also, if my brother's in here. Thank you for the job. Um, I know you know that I hated it, but you also needed my help. So there's that. Um, but like, I'm, I, I am in like a different position than I think a lot of people, like I don't have like a family to take care of. I don't have like these overwhelming amount of like, like electricity bills that I have to pay every single day. Like I have my college expenses that I need to pay for, but I think I'm in a different situation than a lot of people. Um, and that's why I think I'm able to say with a lot of confidence that I don't care where the stock pings around if the shorts haven't covered yet. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. I know everybody has their own different outlook on this. Um, but yeah. We will win if we don't get scared. 100%. I miss being younger. That was adorable. Thank you, number letters. Tomorrow is Friday the 13th. Oh, you know what? I didn't need this. There's another VIX? Where? Oh, I, there's my backup account. Short the VIX one. Eric, what's up? Uh, Yep, I'm currently in a great situation with myself. Buy and hold no matter what. Eric. Good, really good for you, man. I just know that there's people out there that aren't in that same position that are like, I like, I understand why people are like, I need, I want this money now. Like, I get it, but that's not like feasible with this play. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. This, the market doesn't care about your own personal obligations, it's going to do whatever it's gonna do based on the different economic and financial and buy, sell, volume, option, whatever indicators there are. It's just gonna do what it's gonna do. So it's like hopping on a roller coaster in midway. You're like, I need to get off. I'm done. It's like, or I need it to be over now. It's like, well, you can't. You got on the roller coaster. You can't get off. It's just going to do what it's going to do on the track that it's going. Uh, okay, Fintel only showed 300,000 available. We can look at Stonko Tracker and what they're showing for tomorrow. Let's see. Uh, Stonko Tracker is showing 300,000 available as well. Right here, 300K. Uh, let's take a look at the options really quick. Where did the options go? Oh, right here. Uh, 176,000 contracts out of the money. That's going to be a lot of liquidity for some of these funds. But at the same time, options are not hurting this play. They're also helping, remember. You can't you can't say that options are the re, like options are bad. You shouldn't buy options. One, don't tell anybody else what to do with their money. You don't have the, really the right to do that. Um, and two, you got to think about what happened in June when let's say a lot of these contracts right here, like let's say for next week, if one hundred fifty thousand of these contracts ran in the money next week, everybody would saying would be saying options are like the best thing in the world because we just ripped from all of the hedging. 
Uh, M. Kriegs, I sent you an Adobe link of the Citadel list in your DM. It's extensive, extensively mind blowing. M. Kriegs, I will take a look of that. Um, but I, it's gonna take some time. I think I don't want to just be like reading um on stream. I'm still trading other stocks, crypto, real estate, cars, diversification, classic car pal. Uh, I think that's a smart thing for you to do. I think there's a lot of money to be made in the markets that we are in right now. Um, for me, I'm looking at stuff at the, like other things at the same time. Like I'm trying to figure out a time to get into uh, plays that are going to basically like play the market correcting. They're going to be bond plays. They're going to be volatility plays. And then I also need to get to back to doing my typical earnings plays because I miss doing those. Those were fun. Let's see. Honestly, I think Hedgie's target options, though, they can see them. We can see them too. Schwab increased margin requirements on AMC and GME. Dan, um, that could be... Um, that, that could be old M James 007 buying liquid IV right now using discount code short the VIX 007. There isn't a discount code with my name. I wish there was, that would be pretty cool because I've drank liquid IV every single day, uh, for like the past year. Oh, Ben Levine. What's going on, man? Hopefully Atticus is doing really good. Um, thanks for popping into the live stream. And thank you so much for that super chat, man. Um, I would go as far as to say, as long as people are making money other ways, even if it's AMC puts, don't recommend, uh, and bringing it back to AMC shares. Ben, yeah, honestly, like I just think people can do whatever they want um, with their money. Um Ethan, thank you so much for another super. Both a professional thumbnail uh, backgrounds get eyes and an overlay gives you an unspoken credibility to keep them. I used to run a D&D &D stream on Twitch and our viewers tripled after getting graphics. Ethan, I would love uh, some help. Uh, do you, can you shoot me a DM on Twitter? Um, because honestly, I do need a lot of help with that. Like if you've seen my videos, they're just like me talking, just spitting information. Um, and then I am going to figure out this 1080p thing, either like right after the stream or before um, the next time I stream. So it's not all blurry for you guys. Like it's clear on my stream and it's clear. Uh, ooh, it's actually not clear on Restream right now. Um, but yeah. Ben says he's doing awesome, buddy. I love having a son. Ben, that's awesome, man. Congrats. Everybody drop some babies in the chat. Ben had a baby last week. So he's got a week old newborn. Okay, is there any IV that's not liquid? Uh, yeah, the implied volatility on a lot of stocks. Uh, Junior, thank you so much for the super... Hey, just joined. Not sure if you answered this already, but what do you think we should expect tomorrow and Monday? Um, honestly, I always like to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. We saw 14 million shares borrowed today, according to Ortex. So it's very possible that they could be using a lot of these shares to use against us tomorrow with short positions, um, either to try to freak people out in the pre-market um, right as the market opens or towards the bell tomorrow. 14 million shares is a lot, and they could also loan uh, more shares out tomorrow to, to be used. Um, but we're going to have to see. We do have a lot of gamma, like a little bit of gamma potential to the upside in terms of calls, um, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, but thank you so much for the super, Junior. Uh, introverts. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. It was Citadel Kensington Global Strat based out of the Cayman Islands and operated by Citadel Advisors in Chicago. Introverts, thank you. All I will keep taking a look at that. I saw Citadel Finance LLC. I'm just gonna have to uh read into it a lot more and just see the trail of companies. Exactly one week old. There we go. Pushin says, my kid's birthday is tomorrow, the 13th, and he's going to be 13. STV, can you say happy birthday, Landon? Landon, happy birthday. Your dad is awesome. Make sure you listen to him. Uh, Angie, thank you so much for the super. Um, have you checked out the apparently exempt website 
powerful data. Uh, I saw it circulating around a little bit today, but I didn't get a chance to look at it. Um, I will have to take a look. Classic car pal says I've had to be Barbies and tea party. Enjoy your son. Would not trade my girls for anything. Uh, tomorrow is triple witching. It shouldn't be. It, it Tomorrow should not be triple witching. It could be, though. I haven't taken a look at that. Remember, those witching days sometimes lead to a little bit more volatility or volume coming in at the end of the days, but they don't necessarily mean a whole lot. Um, we've seen some quad and triple witching days really go nuts, but most of the time it's just kind of a normal day. Um, Ben, thank you so much for another super. Thanks everyone. It's strange. We see huge borrowed shares on the same day as huge return share number. There is something to this, Ben. I, I think you're right as well. We're going to have to see what happens here. Um, but thank you so much for another super, um, really, really appreciate it. The NSC margin requirements went up 25 times, like 10,000 to 250,000. Yes, it did. Uh, that was what the video was about today with the automatic margin call. Um, it's just one instant automatic margin call and what people do not know um let's go back to this that this was towards the end of the video today so people may not have caught this here is what's interesting the dtcc and the nscc are most likely going to up the margin requirements in q4 even higher to really really high levels right here this is from so uh where is it right here is the act so right here is the actual like letter for the comment, but I just copied and pasted it over into this Google doc so I could like highlight stuff for you. Um, so that's where it's coming from. This is not an idle concern on two separate occasions this year. Representatives from the DTCC have informed Alpine that the NSCC plans to seek an increase in the minimal capital requirement to $10 million for corresponding clearing firms such as Alpine and that the NSCC expects that change will be implemented in the fourth quarter of this year. So what we're seeing here is that not only are, is the NSCC going to be doing, one, the automatic margin call rule, like multiple automatic margin calls, the, the, the every single day one, um, versus the one time just based around the periods of monthly options expiration, and the increase in the minimum capital requirement to from 10 to 250000 but then they may up it for certain members to at least $10 million or more. So they're tightening down. So everybody that's been saying these NSCC rules and the proposed rule changes haven't really been doing anything. Oh, Aria, good night, man. Thanks for coming in. Um, so anybody who like really has been saying that these proposed rule changes haven't been doing a lot, one, you can't see it. It's going to be a slow drain of liquidity coming from these institutions if they're over leveraged and they need to fulfill these margin calls. But there's not going to be in the news this fund got margin called on this day that's just not going to happen um one they don't want other institutions knowing that because they can basically take positions against them um and margin and make them get even more margin margin calls and hurt their liquidity even more so they don't want that really out there in the open and they also are just not going to come out and tell everybody and you're not going to see it, but it's happening because the proposed rule changes are effective and implemented. That's what I've been trying to get across to a lot of people. Um, that even though you can't see something doesn't mean it's not happening. September 1st, 2021, there will be an upsurge, uh, in the volume of margin calls and an increase in the need for third party custodians to see safe collateral him, Duncan, I'm really going to need you to send me that to my DM like right now. Uh, him, Duncan, if you are still in there, my DM, my sh Twitter account is short the VIX one. And if you have that document, I really, really, really want that. I can go searching for it. It's going to take me a while. But if you have it in front of you, um, I would really love to see that. And we could go over that on stream right now um, and take a look at those. Oh, you did? All right. What's your name on Twitter? Oh, is this it right here? Oh, <laughs> oh wait, is this a... Uh, this is nuts. Oh, my. Look at this, guys. Him, Duncan. 
This is nuts. All right, let's 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 take a look through this. During his opening remarks, DTCC's Bob Stewart, Executive Director of Product Management for Institutional Trade Processing, discussed the impact of Phase 5 of uncleared margin rules for over-the-counter derivatives, which kicks in on September 1st, 2021. There will be an upsurge in the volume of margin calls and an increase in the need for third-party custodians to keep safe collateral. Oh, my God. Him, Duncan. Shout out to you for sending this in here. Do a video on it. Oh, I am. This is going to be tomorrow's video right here. This is nuts. So, okay, so there will be an upsurge in the volume of margin calls and an increase in the need for third-party custodians to keep safe collateral. As a, as a result, UMR will likely require many buy-side firms to make significant changes to their existing collateral management processes. He continued, many of these processes are very manual today, often leading to transactional processing error, errors and settlement failures. It is critical that in-scope buy-side firms are well on their way to preparing for compliance. So when did this come out? June 4th. That was most likely right around the time that NSCC 004 got released. September 21st? I see September 1st right here. Classic car, pal. Blast it out tonight. Uh, no, we're going to... Duncan. That is awesome, Duncan. Dude. That was nuts. How do I do it? What the heck? Duncan, thank you for sending that in, man. Do the video in your underpants. You will get more views. Uh, Sean, no. But okay, guys. So here's what this means. We've seen the NSCC rule go into effect. Now, remember, we just saw the comments from right here that they're expecting the minimum capital requirement to go to $10 million. But we're also seeing, where is it? Where did I put this? Right here. That which kicks off on September 1st, which is going to be the end of Q3, the, the last month of Q3, that there's going to be an upsurge in the volume of margin calls and an increase in the need for third-party custodians to keep safe collateral. Oh, boy. Please keep reading. Okay. He continued, blah, blah, blah. Stuart commented that most for firms have made good use of the one-year delay in implementing phases five and six of UMR, making the necessary changes and upgrades to their collateral systems, platforms, and processes. However, recent industry reports have indicated that there is still a large, uh, that there's still a huge number of in-scope market participant firms that are not ready to comply with the upcoming mandate. Ooh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know what that means? My favorite word. You guys know what my favorite word is by now. Liquidations. Okay, here we go. Calling out the risks of noncompliance, Stewart highlighted that establishing segregated accounts with an unaffiliated third-party custodian is the new mandate. Oh, you know what this sounds like? Oh, one up. That's what this sounds like right here. So this sounds like the precursor to NSCC 010. Now, remember... Okay, there's been okay here. Okay, here, here's where we're gonna we're gonna start connecting some dots right here. Everybody is saying that NSCC 010, the one that SFT program where they're gonna post the securities as collateral and get cash, is going to be coming into effect on August 24th. I thought it was when the comment period ended and then it could be approved on an accelerated basis. Maybe not, because if this rule starts to kick in, then one, it could lead to these fire sales, which they don't want. So they're going to need a way for those third-party custodians, which the NSCC would act as. He added, it is a mechanism that many buy-side entities may not have implemented in the past, and it is important that all involved are comfortable with this process now. This will be a challenging and under and uh, this will be challenging undertaking as thousands of accounts within the industry are expected to be established. So okay, so this is basically talking about those SFT accounts. Hey buddy. Yo, yo, what's going on? I didn't hear the blue blue, but just him, Duncan, just sent me this. I don't know if you saw the very beginning. I didn't see the beginning of it. I just caught it halfway through, and I'm just like, what the f This is what good, is dude. This? Look what we got here. So this is the first part. Uh, it basically says uh, 
there's a new phase that the DCCC is rolling out, the uncleared margin rules. And it says on September 1st, there will be an upsurge in the volume of margin calls and an increase in the need for third-party custodians to keep safe collateral. And it wait, wait, basically so, this came out so, on, on June 4th. Where, where is this? What is it? Can you send me this link? Yeah. Dude, I need to take already, notes. I already and... have a video for tomorrow. This is awesome. This is ridiculous. So here's here's where it kind of gets interesting. <laughs> Every, everyone's like, oh, so that's how you guys work. Custodian account. <laughs> No, that sounds. Wait, wait, hold on. The third-party custodian account, like the SFT. Basically, yeah. Interesting. Okay. And um, if you look at this right here, um, I don't know if you got a chance to watch my video from today, but it's this letter right here complaining about NSCC 005. Oh, I sent you this. Yeah, no, that part um, I got. But this right here, where it says um, the NSCC is going to plan to increase the minimum capital requirement to 10 million for corresponding clearing firms such as Alpine uh, in Q4. So not only are they going to be getting margin so called, Q4 they're going to be like getting starting October calls at a much higher rate. But hold on a second. So this is starting, you said September 1st is when it starts. Yes. And then you said at the starting of Q4 as well. That's October 1st. What Q4 is for the second document you just pulled up? Yes. Okay. But we don't know. We don't know necessarily what that is yet. Oh, of course. Like, no, I'm just trying to figure who's out. Going to be getting those big margin requirements. Right, right, right. I'm well. Hopefully, someone that's short in AMC doesn't like. There's not just one person, right? I mean, right. As long as it's someone to kick it, kick things off. If one, all we need is one. <laughs> all we need is one domino to fall. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to start seeing it, not not to say that would be the short squeeze. In order to start seeing some bullish momentum. That's all I'm talking about. Uh, okay, interesting. I'm just trying to. Hmm, 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 hmm. I'll say less now. I'll just do some reading first. It's cool. This is very cool. This is awesome. Who said Tim this? Duncan? Thank you so much for sending me this. Tim man. Duncan from the Spurs. Him Duncan. Oh, him Duncan. Yeah, post it in the chat. What up, people? All right, I will. What's going on, Black Wall Street? Claybro's in the house. What up, Claybro? Chopper three R six eight. Sounds like a, like a weapon. But I guess. I'm not going to say what kind of weapon, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Hey, we got four minutes so you could let it rip. I don't know. This is pretty cool, though. Wait, hold uh, on. This was posted in when? This was June 4th. So let me get this straight. September 1st is increased margin requirement. September uh, 1st is increased volume of margin calls. Well, yeah, sorry. Margin calls mean they're going to have to put up more... Like they're gonna have to have a larger margin requirement, right? Yes. Um, okay, so that's one. The two is uh, August thirty first. They're gonna be shifting the exchange for AMC, which means five percent of the float might potentially have to be purchased. And then there's also one zero one zero zero one zero on the zero zero oh one zero one zero. That's coming out on the twenty fourth. Now that one to me isn't gonna have much of an effect on its own. It can only really compound. Um, if there are other difficulties for these shorters, like if they start to see a price rise and they can't make it short as much as they've been before, that's when we'll start to see a difference. Yep. Interesting. Okay. So this sounds like I'm buying calls for <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> not saying anything. Just saying. Have you not seen the new Ortex update? Ortex. No, I have not. 14, point, 14 million stop, borrowed stop, shares. Stop, stop, 8 stop, million stop, returned. Stop, stop, stop. stop Shortage is 19.33. What the fuck? <laughs> Are we swearing? Can we swear? I go for it. Trey was going for it the other night, and I ended up all right. Kidding me? Yeah. So tomorrow could be bloody. What the fuck? Oh fuck. Ninety eight. I wonder what the shares on loan is gonna look like. That's gonna be fucking. It's gonna be like twenty four percent. That's gonna be stupid. Yeah, we're gonna see it's we're gonna, gonna be... see the utilization on Monday go to ninety six. Calls on utilization going to ninety six. Tomorrow could potentially I don't know how many shares are on loan though. The utilization might not no, the utilization might not go that far that high up. Depending on, Monday, on how many on Monday, I'm saying. Oh. Well, how many shares are on loan though? One oh seven, but there was a there was a five almost six million borrowed change. I know, but compared to how many shares are on loan, so it really depends on if are more people making the like shares available to to borrow. Five percent. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm with that. Oh man, 
they're getting you with the synthetic squares. I know. I'm looking at the chat right now, like flip, flippity flip, flip. Um, no, no, synthetic squares on my channel. This is this is STV's channel. We're good over here. Yeah, but I, I should I should extra good on Twitch. Yeah, exactly. I shouldn't be uh, swearing over here because I know first thing tomorrow morning I'm just gonna be letting them fly. <laughs> and then <carry laughs> is them that over. TMI or synthetic TMI? Oh, I did. We did have a question up here that I missed. I think um ashraf says wondering why they're going out for blood tomorrow something is up tomorrow never seen this much aggressiveness in six months with blatant shorts 14 million i think we saw it right after the june run-up i think is when we started to see the the increases or right before i'm not i'm not sure the exact timing of it but well we we saw i don't know if you guys remember this we got great news after fast nine came out with fast nine ufc you know, uh, AA taking new position on the board. Like we had some great news, and then we just saw a bloody week. Mm -hmm. like, we just saw like almost two weeks of basically a thirty to forty percent dip. Like it was ridiculous, and it's like we've already been through this once. It's dude with that. Whew. If we if if retail can hold the freaking line and they dump these shares. <laughs> It's done. They're done. Like they're done. The whole theme of this stream was like, we're, we're like the, the NSCC has been doing stuff and the DTCC has been doing stuff just because you can't see it doesn't mean they're not. And then that just kind of solidified it. So what's the buy for tomorrow? Blood is in the water. I'll be buying calls for 2022 at the end of the day. I can't say when. 2023. 2022. Gotcha. If if this if they if they try to fuck everybody tomorrow and they and retail holds the line and they dump all these shares and we see even a little bit of strength, twenty twenty two potentially potential. Well, yeah, twenty twenty two. I'll be I'll, I'll be content with something along the lines of uh, March maybe July. Okay. If that's the case. Not bad. Somebody says in Matt's voice, "Oh brother." <laughs> Yeah, because I'm just trying to think, like, how many – after this, if this were to go down, well, they said 8 million return, right? 8.14, yeah. So that's that's as, that's as much as they would have left, roughly. So we can still, yeah. still do this this Friday and then do it again next Friday, but not as much. For? Taking a hit. Yeah. Well, they still have – we don't know. What's well, the difference between 3%? A di like a 3% difference between the free float on loan and the estimated short interest, we're going to get the estimated short interest really close to the percentage of free float on loan very soon. Jesus Christ. Well, uh-oh, hedgies. Uh-oh. Uh, ben says, okay, Alpine is a range of mountains with a lot of snow and ice. We got Glacier. We got Iceberg. I'm sensing a trend. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> That's funny, Ben. Oh, so how's your night, Ben? You say Ben or Bean? You. I said how uh, how has your night been? Oh, good, good, good. It was uh it was chill. I did put a video up, it wasn't doing so well, so I think YouTube's a little slow right now. But, yeah, it was uh, happening. I think mine was a little bit slow earlier too. Let me take a look. Yeah. A bit slow. That's what happened. We have a, a huge dip at the end of the day. But uh, I think um yeah tomorrow's gonna be tough oh dude i'm gonna go nuts on this video tomorrow there's there's a couple of things too have you looked at this um s the fed buying citadel's bonds <laughs> nando's nuts <laughs> oh i guess it is power hour um say again have you looked at the the fed buying citadel and i think Susquehanna's maybe. Yeah, uh, no, I, saw, I got a few messages about that, but I haven't actually got into it yet. When I was out, I think a few people sent me some uh, some DMs about it just now, and I was just like, "What is going yeah. on here?" It says like, it says Citadel Finance LLC. So I looked at that first, and I was like, "Oh no, this might be the wrong Citadel," because I made that mistake once with Citadel in Ecuador, and I'm not gonna make it again. <laughs> right, right. So I was trying to look for it, and I couldn't find anything that said Citadel Finance LLC. Um, but it did is? look like that Citadel Securities got added to the SMSC. Hold on, let me look. Where is it? Right here. Uh, 
the SMCCF, they got added to it. Eligible sellers. So they're eligible to sell like securities to the Fed, I think, as of today. So it looks like it would be them, but I just want to make sure. M. Kriegs, I know you sent me the list. Okay, I'll look at the list now. Where is this? Yeah, I'm going to have to zoom in. Yeah, I can't zoom in on this computer without like zooming in on everything, and it's going to be a disaster. Yep. I feel like my think... mouse is going to die again when I have Trey, Keenan, TMI, and Rogue on the stream, and I'm just going to be sitting here doing nothing. It's only going to die when you need it the most. Exactly. Uh, interesting. Yeah, that's going to be good. It's not being power half hour. It not being power half hour did not slow us down tonight, said TMI's avocado. This is probably the most amount of people we've had in here when we start power half hour. Yeah, guys, put on your seatbelts, buckle up. <laughs> it's also Friday the 13th tomorrow. Oh, that's what I'm going to tweet. <laughs> I was just tweeting that out right now. Were you really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Falling to your shit, people. Yeah, M. Creek, send that list to uh, TMI too. TMI, it's a list of like every single Citadel corporation. Which Citadel? Like, like, they, like, like all the ones that are connected. Okay, sick. Sick, 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 sick. TMI is confusing FINRA 010 August 23rd with NSCC 010, which is published to the Federal Register today. Mike. That's interesting. Hmm. I honestly didn't know the. Hmm. See, this is the problem. It's not. It, it's probably not TMI's fault. Like somebody probably just came in today, and people were spamming 010 on the on the twenty third. Like people got to come in and say like NSCC or FINRA oh, so, or something else. So no. So but we did. So yeah. I mean, I, I just made that mistake, but we did clear that up on the stream today. Because someone did come in and say that it was published today, and then you're were, you were talking about how if it's published today, it could potentially go basically live very quickly because of 06. Yes. Oh, or oh, oh, 06. Yeah. Yeah. So we did go that through that today, but yeah, people when 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 questions do come through, they have to decipher exactly because there's so many freaking different uh, numbers that get used for different. Uh... Oh wait, wow. Okay, I'm gonna send you a tweet right now. This is nuts. Really? All right, cool. Yeah, uh, Ashraf says, are they going for the Friday 13th vibe? I have 18K waiting for 28. I can smell the desperation. Their blood is in the water. Ashraf, there you go. Uh, Angie says, hey, guys, I'm pretty sure they're going to attempt to pin us under 30. It may not work out quite the way they're anticipating. LFG, Angie, I, I would have to agree with you. They're, they're going to go f like... Yeah. Okay. How do you, how do you say this and sound bullish? That's a test. How do you describe I, like what they're going to pin us below thirty? Just just asking. How how can you describe what could potentially happen and still sound bullish? Oh, I just talk about the utilization and the short interest. Like if they do that, we know that they're going to do it anyway, and it just gets us closer to that four share recall territory. So like there's going to be more shares out on loan. There, it's going to be difficult for them to get their hands on shares. The borrow fees go up. Wait, wait, and then wait. they my, just can recall them anytime they want. My Twitter page just grayed out for you. What? What happened? Someone said TMI, you sent me that tweet. Uh oh, shoot. Sorry, not one second. I will send it to your DM. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Can't bring it up on mobile. Interesting. TMI. Are they messing with you on Twitter now, too? I'm on my Twitter account right now, so I hope not. I'm on your Twitter account, too. You're fine. Okay. You are good. Oh, boy.
Wait, what? Hold up. All right, that's going to be cool to look. Um, that plays into what we were just looking at, too. Do you see that? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just looked at it. That that plays into exactly what we were just looking at. With that's the, what uh, I'm saying. Because if, if there's a due date and they have to, and they're starting to, you know, get clarification now, they're just trying to figure out. Okay, we know we're fucked, but how fucked are we really? Yeah. Because like if they if they don't have to do both and they just have to do one, they're still fucked. But it's 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 doable. They may not even need to use collateral from the SFT, right? Like they could potentially just deal with that with cash on hand. But if they have to do both, who knows how many shares are out there? Probably a. A boatload. Well, I mean, sorry. They know how many shares are out there. This is probably why they're asking. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at that. That that's yeah, that's okay. I'll uh, I'll make a video breaking all that stuff down for you guys tomorrow. Um, there's like some terms in there that I haven't seen. I have an idea of what they are, but I'll just get pull up the the pages from the DTCC that just tell us so we know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, I'm literally, I have that up right now and I have Investopedia. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to take both of them as the, as, the, as the sheet stuff. I'm like, this is nuts. But so far, everything looks bullish, but tomorrow does look like, you know, it, we'll see. Like, dude, we'll see. All, it changed again. That was definitely 14 at one point, I think. Unless I'm seeing things. I'm going to zoom back in your video. I thought it was 14.05. STV stream is TMI's dark pool for swear it was, jar. Oh, it was 14.05. You're right. 14.05 yeah. and it was 8.14. So 5.91 was before. And now. Yeah, so it's flickering around. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, this happened. The first time that I saw this happen on one of my late nights, I was like, I thought I was crazy. Hearing hearing tear my swear is so weird. Cause I've been I've been so freaking good. I'm telling you guys, I changed my ways, except for on late night fix or short the fix. I can let it fly. Exactly. No, it was thirteen point nine five. No, you're wrong. TMI just looked at it and it was fourteen point oh one oh five. I, I just kidding. pulled it just press rewind on the YouTube videos, right? It's right in front of you. When I screenshot it, it was 14.14. Why can't they just release the numbers or just not change it until they have the root? Like, and the funny thing is, those numbers are only based on what's being reported. It's not them. Exactly. Somebody said STV Connect. <laughs> <laughs> Be tech smart. That was funny. Uh, STV still. Sounds like he's still using uses training wheels. Uh, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't? Let's see. I just went back to the stream. You went back to the wrong spot then. Because it was definitely 14.05. Yeah, okay. You know what? How about this? I'll give you guys a time. You guys can run with it off of there. Um, the time is... Let me see if I can go live. Do, do, do. Can anyone give me a quick recap of what's supposed to be happening tomorrow? 13 minutes and 33 tomorrow? seconds rewind. What was it? 13 minutes and 33 seconds ago. Gotcha. Yeah. Clay, tomorrow, they just took out a bunch of shares on loan today. It's around $14 million, so it's possible that they're using those shares to push us down tomorrow because we're right above 30 and if we close below 30 in their mind it's like oh we're gonna shake some people out which they probably will but at the same time it's like okay there's gonna be other more convicted apes buying those shares so it's just consolidating the amount of people who are holding shares for the long term uh also if you guys don't mind just dropping a like on the video if you guys have seen uh when you pull up if you search amc on youtube it pulls up the fudders at cnbc um saw and that. we want to not have their information be spread so we have to try to rank above them so if just engage in the videos helps um i think tmi has been talking about that too yeah it's ridiculous it it's is tough stupid. it's like and um, if you're if you're a new ape and you're you're looking watching this for the first time it's like hold on a second this is the first video that people get when they pull up AMC. Yeah. It's literally the worst people speaking about the stock. It's like, all right, well. It's not Trey. It's not Matt. It's like, come no. on, guys. Stupid. Um, buddy S, thank you so much for the super. Um, psst, 
Short still haven't covered. Thanks, STV and TMI. Buddy, thank you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you for the support. What is the real deal on AMC? Uh, the shorts have not covered. They're adding to their short position, and the estimated short interest at a bare minimum is almost 20%. That's a lot. That's stupid. Oh, these guys are so fucked. They're so, so fucked. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a laughable amount of fuckery that's going on right now in the market, and it's just mind blowing that I had no idea six months ago. It's, it's ridiculous. If you, if somebody asked me if the market was fair, I, well, I wouldn't say yes. I'd be like, okay, well, look what happened in January. Obviously, it's not. But like this, though, like this is different. It's just ridiculous at this point. It's like, okay, continue doing what you want to do. We all know. It's like it's like they're trying to hide like what we all know. And it's like it, we can see exactly what we you're doing. We see you. We see you seeing us seeing you. <laughs> it's like somebody trying to sneak around and you're just sitting there with a flashlight just watching them. And they're just doing like suspicious things. It's like, I see you. I see you. I still see you. Are you going to stop? No. Okay. Well, I still see you. It's like, all right eventually you're gonna have an issue stv who blew out rogues back or was it the was it that he was carrying your mom around <laughs> that's funny if you want to see who blew it his back you better ask your significant other uh no to yeah exactly totally not the fbi he was carrying your uh, wife around or husband we don't judge or husband that yeah same or both. Hey, maybe you got a little bit of both. Oh, both. I pick one when you can have both. Yeah, people were talking about wife changing money again today, and I was like, why do you guys want to switch so bad? What if your significant other owns AMC and they're going to ditch you? Be careful. Thomas, thank you so much <laughs> for the saying. super. Why can't they just kick the can down the road forever? I am beyond... I'm beyond frustrated uh, because they're just going to get margin called eventually. Like eventually the position is just going to go against them to a certain point because they're, they can't push it down forever because people will just keep buying the stock. Like, the, like the, there's more and more people every day getting on the level where it's like, okay, shorts haven't covered. I'll just keep buying. The fed is kicking the can down the road too with those silly reverse repos. I swear, I swear, if if retail sold, the Fed would cut that stuff out so quickly. <laughs> like, the Fed would what? Cut out these reverse repos so quickly. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, man. This oh, is tomorrow is child tax credit day, too? I thought that already happened. Oh, it's going to happen on a monthly basis, I think. Oh, there we go. That's awesome. People are going to be buying some more AMC with that, I bet. Oh, it's going down for sure. Jackson Brock says, I'm keeping my wife. Good man. Not if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Let kidding, Jackson. <laughs> leg fly. It is power half hour. For you, those of you guys who don't know, we do get a little wild in this last half hour. So that was a joke, Jackson. Spend the money on child, not gamble. Gamble on what, though? Like, go play blackjack? That's what I'm saying. What if, he, what if it's a sure thing, though? <laughs> Jackson says, bro, you're 12. Uh, flip those numbers around and then add one. Age ain't nothing but a number. <laughs> Uh, case. I mean, once you're legal, let's 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 just keep that one here, people. All right. <laughs> is everyone my, getting another stimulus check again, or is it just parents? My kids Do want I, more AMC. Sorry, say again. Is everyone getting another stimulus check again, or is it just parents? So it's not a stimulus check. I think it's just it's a, just the tax, tax credit that they were going to get at the end, right? Exactly. It's not even new money. It's just you know, yeah, it's money you're, you're going to get anyway. They're just giving it to you in advance. That's all it is. 
Oh, Thomas, this is a good one. I think TMI's got a definitely has a good answer for this super. Why is Sean Williams, Motley Fool, literally obsessed with AMC? It's bananas, pun intended. TMI, let him have it. So this jackass of a fool was going <laughs> back and forth with me on Twitter, and I was giving this guy way too much attention, but I really wanted to get into it with this guy. I got two minutes for him anytime he wants. So this guy started quote tweeting me saying that I'm I have I'm basically spitting blatant lies about AMC, things that I know nothing about. Now, post-squeeze, I promise you guys, after everything is over, I promise you guys, I will rip him to shreds, him and his little stupid face. But until that time, I don't want to give him too much attention. So I'll rip him here, but I don't want to take it back to Twitter again. I've blocked him for now, so he can't quote me anymore. Because I was like, yeah, you you're a big what? dog on Twitter. Let's freaking, let's leave it alone. But then when this thing is done, trust me, oh my goodness, 10-minute rant, easy. Easy 10-minute rant, and I will I will not monetize the video. It will just be sent out to him personally on Twitter, ripping him apart for every single article he's written over the last six months, Whenever, whatever time that is. We're going through every thing, single piece of work. His own company, his own company in the UK disagreed with him. The Motley Fool in the UK disagreed with him. They said buying AMC now is like buying Amazon in 1997. Like, he's just bad at his job. Anyways, yep, that's it. Good question from James. Let's see. Oh, oh, James, that's a good question about Adam needing to sell some of his shares. That's that's literally just for him, his like uh, his estate planning because he's old. He's sixty-seven years old. He needs to figure out some like like to sort of like not retirement, but like Sorry, a transfer of ownership question? or um, a way to set some money aside for his family. If in the event that he's not around anymore. So the media might try to spin that as Adam Aaron sold shares, but everybody knows that this is planned because he's getting older and he needs to set money aside for his family. Oh, yeah. So two things on that that I'll add is one is he took control of the narrative, right? So one of the more, most important things in regards to this whole squeeze has been narrative. Narrative, narrative, narrative. That's all we can run with. So he took control of it. He gave us, he told everybody exactly how it's going to be done. So there shouldn't be any questions about it. So when we, when we hear stories, we know the truth. And, the and he doesn't have to is, tell people. I think he mentioned that too. He was like, I didn't have to tell you this. Exactly. But the second thing is, if it's during the squeeze, because he can sell his shares at any time, right? If it's during the squeeze and then the media runs with something saying Adam Aaron sold shares mid squeeze, it could potentially it could potentially um, limit the squeeze, like not limit, maybe I should say lessen the squeeze, or potentially prolong the squeeze, or potentially affect the squeeze negatively in one aspect, in one way or another, just because of the narrative, right? So because he let his shares basically be handled by a third party. They could do whatever the hell they want. That's not going to be breaking news. Mm -hmm. They can ha they can, he can take advantage of the squeeze as long as it happens after September. Because <laughs> he said he won't sell it in September. I was like, buddy, I hope the squeeze can wait for you because you deserve some more money. But you're already exactly. actually, it is what it is. I'm like, I hope, I hope this thing waits for you. Um, he he can let his shares go, and no one's gonna ask any questions. No one's even gonna know until it's all done, anyways. So that's how I feel. I think he's a smart man. I think he is too. He's um, like, yeah, I'm getting ooh, older, 67. I'm like, TMI, we have a little, uh, we have a little opportunity here. Okay, okay. Ben says, "What do you think about getting a Discord for this community, paid or free? I'd be down." So TMI has a Discord right now, and it's oh. transitioning, transitioning into me and TMI's Discord. So yeah, we got to talk about that right now because there's some people in the Discord. Right there's some people in the Discord that are in the Discord, but they're gonna get kicked tonight. Just FYI, <laughs> because what do you they, do? Didn't, they didn't pay for the Patreon, they just hopped in. I <laughs> just realized it now. Is so that I'm me? Like, no, not you. <laughs> Some people, they know who they are. They're in the Discord right now, and I just saw them pop up, and I was just like, wait, Hedger. It's all right. I know, ah, I know. Interesting. They know who it is. But anyways, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So so we're transitioning TMI's Discord into like me and TMI's Discord. We're going to – there's some other things that are going to go along with that, some more content um, in the form of our podcast that's going to be coming out in September. Yeah, it'll be – first episode will be September. Um, and then, so TMI and I are going to basically post a lot of what we're doing in the market in there. I'm going to handle a lot of like the market updates. So like I give you guys a lot of those in my videos, but like right as I see them, um, 
I'll just write something up, put it in the Discord so you guys can look at it, analyze it. We can talk about it, exactly everything that's going on. Um, oh, and then yeah. obviously we have all like the AMC sections too, so we'll be going hard in there as well. Um, TMI, you want to put your uh, Patreon link in the... Definitely, definitely, definitely. I saw Moo said she paid. Don't worry, Moo. Don't worry. Don't. Although I, I can't remember what your name is, but I remember you saying that it's Moo, by the way. Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. Your broship is amazing. Yeah, it is. TMI the VIX. Let's get some football bets. <laughs> Oh, and it's coming. Fancy football is coming this weekend yeah. as well. Oh, when are we doing that? We got to stream the draft, don't we? Yeah. So the the links should be sent. Okay. So I need to, I'm going to send it. Start a group chat. Uh, actually, I don't know if I should make this public. <laughs> I'll, talk, I'll talk to you about it afterwards. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I forgot about that. We got to talk Fancy about, football we, gotta is talk, coming. we have a lot of group chats we have to start. Oh, yeah. Uh, he has to use a broker. Yeah. I think Robinhood buying say was meant to encourage a mutiny or paranoia against AA. Yeah, of course it was. If that was like the goal of it. Or here's the other thing. Everybody hates Robin Hood. I'll, I'll make a little bold statement here. Yeah, they should have prepared better for this situation, had enough capital in order to maintain that situation. But wasn't just Robin Hood that turned off the buy. It also wasn't Robin Hood's decision really to turn off the buy. It was the clearinghouse that was like, nope, turn it off. And they had no I, – uh, I heard more about this the other day that they were, like, really, really forced. I think it had to do with – um. Yep. What What was – oh, you told it, me about it, it, didn't you? It was the IPO. The IPO, IPO, yep. Yeah. They so, be yeah, IPO. like, Vlad coming on television and being like, oh, no, it wasn't a liquidity issue. Like, screw you, dude. Just be honest. Well, he so he, we literally saw him selling out the retail for his own personal gain, and that's what it came down to. Exactly. Like he, it, it was, it's still bad. Yeah. Yeah. TMI's avocado says STV was watching videos on how to properly short the VIX today. It was a rabbit hole. Oh, really? Yeah. It's like hard to actually do it. Like, I don't think you can actually do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which clearinghouse? Apex, because we will cash up. I'm pretty sure Robin Hood used that. Uh, the uh, clearinghouse that? that Robinhood uses, I think, is under Robinhood as well. Like they just didn't want to say that they were gonna, that they would be insolvent. Like they couldn't use the proper wording, or else they would get in trouble, and also it would severely affect their IPO, which it already did. But I mean, severely affected in a different account. Like what I don't think people realize is, if, okay, emotion aside, with Robinhood, I, I was telling the guys. Uh, I was telling some people previous to them IPOing that they were going to shoot through the roof, right? It's just, it was going to happen. It's a tech company. It's an IPO. It's the thing about the times, retail investors, like the idea is still golden, um, although the uh, the track record is horrible. And the, you know, the relationship between the consumers and their product is horrible. And the <laughs> leadership team is horrible. Like there's a lot of different things that are horrible. Yeah. Um, but they should have said we would have been solvent one they should have at least stress tested they didn't do that they were negligent they just sped things through to, to, to basically ipo as soon as possible they they skipped a bunch of steps which led to retail being fucked because if they didn't skip these steps they would have properly had the right amount of liquidity in order to allow the squeeze to happen and it's like because they skipped steps to ipo and it was not just them but i'm just saying that's just one example and mm -hmm. then they didn't want to tell everyone the truth that they fucked up they also they also knew the employees knew that they were going to turn off the buy button before they did, and they made trades based on it. Exactly. That's the new SEC investigation against them. And 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 it's unlike if you're in a car crash. Uh, what's that? Team I is a shower or a grower? Uh, I don't know. Why don't you uh, wait till later on tonight, and I'll show you. No, no. Um, <laughs> It's like if you're if you're in a car crash, it's like okay, people can say, well, if you were in a car crash and you hurt your neck, you know, you had to take this much time off work. They can try to find a calculation, but with this, because it's finance and investing and numbers that are straightforward, you, it's 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 an infinite amount of money that was lost for an infinite amount of people. It's it's the weirdest thing. It's just like, so let me get this straight. You're saying 
65 million Americans potentially lost hundreds of thousands of dollars on the same day. Like, can you imagine yep. money this class action lawsuit would actually be? Like, it's stupid. It is a lot. And the thing is, that makes it even worse for them. If that is that also if the SEC, SEC can prove that their employees made trades based on it, then it's really bad. That class action lawsuit, I think, would get even worse. Exactly. But they're, they're investors, though, because word gets around. Their investors 5x, 10x off of their original investment based on the IPO. So they made their investors happy. They IPO. They became young billionaires. Let's just wait and see what happens at the same time um, next year when this class action lawsuit gets started. It's going to take yes, a while, sir. but uh, it'll be interesting. So we got about one minute left of the stream, guys. This was a really eventful one tonight. Shout out to him, Duncan. That was an awesome find on the DTCC. We got TMI hopping in at the end. What up, um, Put his Discord in the chat. If you guys, if you guys want to join that, I'll hang out in there. I got to go in there a little bit more than I am right now. Yeah, we're, so um, we're gonna we're, we'll figure out a, a proper like schedule and, yeah. and some stuff. We'll we'll definitely get that going. Yeah, and the mods yeah, are we'll also in there. Too, they have their own little group in there too. Who does? The mods have their own little Discord group. I shouldn't say little. They, the mods have a Discord group in the Discord. Oh, interesting. Um, all right, guys. So that is uh 10 p.m. Ooh. Trey, who's not Trey's trades this time, <laughs> sent in a super. Uh, Pushing push with powder comes in with the hammer on the top rope. <laughs> oh my god, that's the that's the winner. That's push the it. winner. That might be the funniest thing I've ever seen. That's a that's a buzzer beater. Okay, in regards to the late night fix, that's a buzzer beater. Right, that at the is last a second. real good buzzer beater. Uh, hey TMI, say ah like you're at the dentist. Ah, the. Well, you pronounced that's, his name wrong, so I paid to teach you. Oh my! That's a that's a Trey Songz lyric. Who do you think this is? I know where you got that from. Oh, interesting. So All right, Alex, guys. Doctor. Well, make sure you guys go follow TMI on uh, YouTube. His backup, Instagram, Twitter. It's all about the same. Uh, Mast underscore investor on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> if you if you hit the top link in uh, the pin link in the chat right now on Instagram, I will follow you back right now. So whoever wants to follow me, I will follow you back. Yeah, right go follow now. go follow him on Instagram ASAP. Yeah, and he'll send, he'll same thing with back. TMI. Mast underscore investor. Yeah, but I'm not gonna send you back nudes. Uh, he definitely will. <laughs> send you back those photos with the ass chaps in them uh tmi is the one with the back backwards boxers all right guys good night <laughs> <laughs>